LCHS Falcon Baseball. Brought to you by Cars Plus. Dr. Tim Merrill and the Foot Clinic. Radio Shack. Howard Bentley. Century 21. White's Motorsports. Tracks and Trails. Maxine's Fashion House of Beauty. And Carter's Discount Drugstore. Hello everybody and welcome here to a great sunny spring afternoon temperature in the 70s. We're here for tonight's game between the Lincoln County Falcons and the Lawrence County Wildcats. We're privileged tonight on this beautiful afternoon to have uh, the principal from Lincoln County High School, Mr. Jim Stewart here with us. Mr. Stewart, thanks for coming uh, up and talking to us. Uh, what's going on in school this week? Well, quite a bit, Tommy. It seems like there's always a lot going on. Of course, like you say, one of the highlights today is uh, this afternoon, this evening here with the Falcon baseball team. Uh, it's just uh, really a pleasure to get out and see our kids here and the support that we have. Uh, if people haven't been out to our school and to see the facilities that we have athletically, then it'd be worth the trip. Our baseball field is just a, a, a beautiful uh, complex, and I will say that it's due to the baseball boosters. The, every bit that's been done here uh, has been contributed and the work done by the boosters. A lot of people don't understand that no tax money goes into our sports yes, facilities. That's right. And this is uh, something I think they need to because our softball has been done by our uh, field and it's a beautiful place. Uh, of course, we know that the football was done years ago the same way. Our tennis courts, uh, soccer field, they're working on it and we're playing on it now. So uh, it takes a while this way, but I think it's important that the community and the ones that are interested buy into these ventures. And, uh, oh, yes, the, sir. Now, we've got other things, too, uh, of course, like talk about sports, because I enjoy sports. Sure. I also enjoy what's going on inside. Yes, sir. I really believe that our kids now are responding more to challenges academically than any time since I've been here. Yes, sir. We're registering for next year's classes, and I've just been thrilled to see what they're signing up for. Of course, <clears throat> hopefully everybody knows about our robotics team. They qualified for the national and will be going the 24th of April through the 28th, uh, competing nationally there. Yes, big time. So, you know, that's a big thing. And uh, if you didn't get to see the fabulous 50s show, you missed a tremendous show. Yes, sir. And there were 93 cast members, and I'd almost bet that half of them or close to it were Wow. Our kids. Wow, that's great. Uh, our, a bunch of them are our kids. And yes, sir. That's, a, that's uh, something that people don't see very often. Uh, we get a chance to see the football and the basketball, but we don't see the uh, the course like they should because we've got some very talented kids here. And academically, we do well. And I have to mention, too, that just last Tuesday night, Chris Vessels was selected mid-state Young Farmer of the Year. Great. And that's quite a quite a feat. So I know him. He's a great boy. Chris is fine. He's had a, a, a good, well, three years here and uh, done a lot of good work for us. But yes, sir. We have a lot we of good things going. Yes, sir. And we know a little secret, too, don't we? It's inside or outside of school, Falcons can run as fast, throw as hard, learn as much, kick as high as anybody around. <laughs> Uh, well, especially the young Falcons. Some of us old Falcons, yes. are, my, my wings are drooping just a little bit, but uh, yes. uh, I tell you what, I, I do love the blue and I, uh, red, white, and blue, and uh, I love the Falcons and, and the kids that we have. I, I don't go many places without telling people that we've got the best high school in Tennessee, and I say that, uh, and I believe it. Yes, sir. I really can. believe it. Yes, sir. Uh, we've yeah. got a great faculty, and uh, but the, what's fun is the way the community supports us. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, we're... It's a getting, vital ingredient. Oh, it has to be. It's vital. Uh, we are buying new band uniforms and yes, for several thousand dollars, probably around $30,000, and it probably took me about four hours to raise that much money. Ain't that well, something? That's, that shows you the support that's there. 
it's there. We know it's there, and we hope the folks that's watching at home will come out to a Falcon event, uh, whether it's inside in the theater or in the gym or in the uh, commons hall or out here on one of our beautiful playing fields. We're blessed with some of the prettiest playing fields, and tonight you're watching the game that's on the uh, Tennessee 1998 TWSAA High School Field of the Year, so that we're very proud of here, and we finally call the birdcage. So we hope you folks will sit right back. We appreciate you coming and being with us, Mr. Jimmy. And we'll be right back with the starting lineups. And welcome to the South Paul production of Lincoln County Baseball. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Memphis Car Audio, it's the word on the street. To get the heart of the sound, you've got to get Memphis Car Audio. State-of-the-art car speakers, subwoofers, and amps. Get Memphis Car Audio installed today at Radio Shack. The entertainment of tomorrow you can enjoy today. Radio Shack has gone beyond AM and FM radio with XM Satellite Radio. It's the next generation radio with hundreds of digital crystal clear channels of music, news, sports, and entertainment. Radio Shack now gives you more ways to talk with Singular Wireless. Radio Shack is a Lincoln County authorized Singular Wireless dealer. And Radio Shack has plans to fit your every need. Stop in Radio Shack today for all the hot deals on the hottest technology. 1402 Huntsville Highway in the Bilo Shopping Center. Call 433-4933. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. And we're back. We'd like to uh, welcome you up to the broadcast booth. And with us tonight, are, uh, we've got a step-in color analysis man. We appreciate him being here. And we're going to give him the starting lineup for the Lawrence County Wildcats to do for you fine folks. And I'd like to introduce Lee Jeans to you. And Lee, would you give us a starting lineup for the Lawrence County Wildcats? Yes, sir, I will. Starting for Lawrence County, batting first, center fielder Chad Shannon. At shortstop, Chris Scott. Second base will be Jay Hartsfield. The batting cleanup will be left field Chris Lanning. The pitcher will be Michael Kennedy. Batting sixth will be third base Nathan Willis. Batting seventh will be first baseman Brett Walker. Bat batting eighth is the catcher Boone Yokely. And the right fielder will be Eric Johnson. And now for the Lincoln County Falcon lineup. Um, starting off, shortstop, number 24, John Whaley. In second spot, the right fielder, number three, Jared Gentry. Batting third, uh, number 21, the first baseman, Brandon Sisk. In the cleanup spot, the pitcher, Jim Bob Cooter. In the fifth spot, the center fielder, Thomas Osteen, number five. Batting six, number 16, the catcher, Matt Smith. Seventh, the second baseman, number 10, Joey Ashby. In the eighth spot, left fielder, number four, John Holt. And batting ninth, the DH, number 15, Joey Miller, who will be batting for the third baseman, number seven, Kevin Yates. I'd like to introduce to you folks, uh, sitting to my left, we're, to my right, I'm sorry, we're privileged tonight to have Miss Wanda Tate here to sing our national anthem and God Bless America. And we hope you folks will uh, enjoy her tribute to America here in just a moment. And we want to tell you right now, this is a South Paul production. We'll be right back with the National Anthem. Sportsmen and women of Lincoln County, if you trot line, limb line, jug line, or use four pound to 40 pound tests on your regular line, the next time the big one doesn't get away, bring your catch to Tracks and Trails Taxidermy and let them mount your hog in its natural setting for a memory that'll last you a lifetime. Aaron Lamb and his fine crew at Tracks and Trails are also the best around these parts at giving you hunters, young and old, state-of-the-art mounting on that trophy buck or other big game prize you worked your butt off to get. And turkey hunters, you've got to see what Tracks and Trails can do with that big jake. Tracks and Trails also mount fox, bobcat, squirrel, mink, otter, beaver, raccoon, ducks, and all kinds, and even the big ones. Bear, elk, moose, buffalo, mule deer, rams, and on and on. Right now, we're even doing the king of the jungle, a lion. So come on out to Tracks and Trails at 232 Plantville School Road or call us at 937-7550. At Tracks and Trails, we bring your memories home to roost. Ladies and gentlemen, we're privileged to have with us tonight one of the stars of the 50 show last week, Miss Wanda Tate. Would you please rise and help us and her honor America with her singing of God Bless America and then with our national anthem. Miss Wanda. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairie to the ocean. Why 
with a nice first pitch. <laughs> it's always worth the drive to Howard Bentley. Drive a little, save a lot. Come see all we've got. It's always worth the drive to Howard Bentley. Save you money. The car or truck that's right for you. Award-winning service too. It's always worth the drive Howard Bentley, save you money. I'm Howard Bentley from Howard Bentley Pontiac, GMC, Oldsmobile, Toyota, Fayetteville, Tennessee. We've been a part of the Fayetteville, Lincoln County community for over 18 years. Ever go into a dealership, come back six months later and not recognize anybody? Not at Howard Bentley's. Our sales force have been with us for years. We will save you money and give you award-winning service after the sale. We also have a full-size body shop to take care of all your body shop needs. That's Howard Bentley, Pontiac, GMC, Oldsmobile, Toyota, Fayetteville, Tennessee. A proud supporter of Lincoln County Baseball. It's always worth the drive to Howard Bentley. Save you money. And we're back, getting ready for the first pitch here. Jim Bob Cooter's on the mound tonight. And the first batter up for Lawrenceburg is Chad Shannon. Jim Bob's first pitch, ball a little bit inside. Chad batting 189 on the season. Lee, it's a beautiful night for a baseball game. It is a beautiful night for baseball. Chad Shannon on the year, 37 at bats. He has scored 10 runs. Try down the middle. So Jim out 1-1 one, one here. Falcons coming off a big win Saturday, Friday afternoon. And hoping to keep the momentum going as we pull into the middle of the season here. I think this is our midweek part of the year. Mid-season part of the year. Next pitch. Ball low. 2-1. Strike on the corner, and that was 3-1 pitch. I missed one of the calls there. So we got a full count here on the first batter. There's a long ball, hard hit, back deep. Holt back against the fence, that ball's gone. So a leadoff home run here. Chad Shannon has got Lawrence County up one zip right off the bat. Wasn't much doubt when it left his bat. I mean, John gave it a great effort, too. He went all the way into the fence trying to make the play. Good hustle there that time by John. No doubt about it. That ball was gone when it left the bat. That is his second home run on the year for Chris Shannon, Chad Shannon. So Chad's uh, 
Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Cooter's already dug himself in a hole. He's down one nothing early on. Maybe we'll smooth out here. That's going to bring up the next batter. Shortstop, number 17, Chris Scott. Scott on the year batting 226. First pitch is a ball. Second pitch, low and away. So Jimmy just needs to get his rhythm going here. He'll be fine. Sharp hit ball, but foul down third baseline. Count goes 2-1. Here's the pitch. Strike outside corner. You'll have to get used Lee, to high school pitching because the strike can be way on the outside corner. <laughs> Here's the next one. Another almost identical to the other foul ball right down third base line. He's trying to go with that inside pitch and pull it. Count 2 2. Got the always dangerous Jay Hartsfield on, uh, on deck. 3-2. Jay, uh, we remember him from last year and his brother Nathan, who has already graduated. They were always a tough out. There's a pop-up. Going to be over against the line. Third baseman's over. Over plays it just a little bit. Kevin Yates. Thank Playing the first time, I think, this year at third base, and uh, just and got to get used to it. That was a hard play anyway. Third base is a tough base to play. I think he thought that ball was going to go over the fence, and he sort of misjudged it. It actually went deeper than he thought. Yes, sir. So count still full. We've got a full count on the first two batters. Hope this guy doesn't remember what the other guy did. He loves that line. We may have to put the Ted Williams shift on for this guy. He seems like it's all this way. He's getting around on it quick. Yates on third base has to be aware that there's three foul balls right down the line. He needs to hug that line maybe a little bit closer. Be ready for it. Yes, sir. There's a the ball. Sure enough, right side over shortstop. John Whaley's up, makes across the body throw. Sis can't come up with it at first, and that's uh, he probably made it anyway, so that's an infield single for Chris Scott. So two men up. Two men get a hit. That's going to bring up the second baseman, number two, Jay Hartsfield, a little lefty. Hartsfield is a very dangerous batter. First pitch, low and inside. Good stop by Matt Smith, the catcher. Jim Bob needs something good to happen right here. There's the next pitch, curveball, inside and low. Too low to count. Jim Bob needs to settle down. He's, he's went full count on the first two batters and got himself in the full count. He needs to settle down and, and get the ball across the plate and make these batters you know, watch the ball all the way in. 3-0. So that's nine balls already thrown by Cooter out of the first uh, 15 pitches. Actually, that was the 18th pitch. I forgot about two foul balls. So Jim Bob walks Jay Hartsfield, and I know some of that was out of respect. He didn't want to give him anything juicy. And that'll bring up the left fielder, number 19, Chris Lanning. Lanning is a good batter on the year. He's batting 450 for Lawrence County. Nine hits for 20 at bats. That's good contact. Best we may be able to hope for here is a force out then, or a fly out. It doesn't sound like he strikes out much. Wouldn't have thought it on that swing though. So Jim's ahead 0-1, real quick. Pitcher Michael Kennedy's on deck. Watch out in the dugout. Foul ball out of play. So, 0-2. Good sign. 
Now, high school baseball, the pitcher won't come right at him with the 0-2 pitch. Probably try to nibble around the corners and give him a swing at a bad pitch. Got a little room to play. There he was. A little outside, he wouldn't go for it, though. You got a couple plays to play with when you get ahead of guy 0-2. It's usually when you see a big breaking curveball that they don't know whether the umpire who just called one 10 inches outside is going to call or not. There's a lace single up the center. It's going to send the runner in. They're sending him. The play's a little bit off the plate, and they're going to have another run in. Chris Lanning holds up with an RBI single. And Lawrence County has come here meaning business tonight. Got their bats really swinging, connecting on the ball, home run on the first batter. Next two have got on base, no problem. So that puts runners at first and second. Brings up the pitcher, number 22, Michael Kennedy. Kennedy's batting 185 on the year. Only five hits out of 27 at bats. He has struck out four times. He's a great player, I know that. And um, they tell us here in the press box, uh, the scorekeeper, Mr. Tim Smith, told me that uh, he's already signed with Ball State. So he's got college aspirations. We'll see what he can do with the bat. Count 0-1, foul back, 0-2. so much on my mind every week and it's always hard for me to remember everything and I think I've forgotten each week to thank Mr. Tim Smith for the fine job. He is a good scorekeeper as I've ever been around. Keeps the scoreboard updated, accurate, uh, and knows the game of baseball. So we, we want to say uh, a big thank you to him on TV here for the job he does. Count one, two. Batter steps out a little bit as Jim Bob gathers himself. Going to try to make something happen. I just feel it right here on this pitch. Runner takes their lead. Curve ball right down the line. Yates lets it get through him. It's going to send the runner home. And they're going to be in here with their third score of the inning. Still no outs. We're going to score at an E5. It was a hard hit ball, but you got to make them plays in high school. And in fairness to Kevin, he, that's the first night I've seen him at third, so uh, Coach must be uh, experimenting a little bit here tonight, and it's happening to cost us. He'll have to uh, get himself adjusted, and he's got to get that. He, he had his glove down, but he's down just a little bit late. He needs to position himself in front of the ball and pull that ball up in his mitt, come up making the play. Yes, sir. And that'll bring up third baseman, number five, Nathan Willis. So Falcons down three zip. There's another one to Texas Leaguer. Great play by John Whaley. Great diving catch. Gets his first out of the inning and sort of gives us something, some hope here. Great play. Good hustle that time by Whaley. Just a little bit shallow in the grass. He made a good diving catch. Good job by Whaley to get the first out. That'll bring up number 10, the first baseman, Brett Walker. So we really needed that. That kept runners where they were and kept us hoping not to let any more damage get done. Mm -hmm. Walker's batting 240 on the year. He has not struck out. Check that, he has struck out five times. Swing and a miss. Strike one, good fastball that time with Cooter right down the middle. Hard hit ball right up the middle. Whaley's got the play. Out at first, out at second. Double play ball. That'll do it for the first inning. Lawrence County's out quick with three runs. We'll be right back. This is a South Paul television production. It's very important to make those fabulous first impressions with a great looking you. Let the professionals at Maxine's Fashion House of Beauty help you with your plan right from the very start. Maxine's Fashion House of Beauty is the salon where professionals specialize in creative hairstyling designed to fit your own personality. Nancy Wheeler, Maureen Abels, Kay Johnson, Wanda Tipper, Zeldra, and Wilma Buchanan are qualified to advise both men and women about ways to highlight all of your best features. For a hairstyle, cut, color, frost, perm, manicure, or pedicure, what are you waiting for? and Maxine's features wolf tanning beds. They'll give you that deep, dark tan fast. Call Maxine's Fashion House of Beauty for an appointment at 
or stop by in 2250C Thornton Taylor Parkway in Fayetteville. Let the professionals at Maxine's help you find your own great style. Back here at the birdcage, Lee Jean and Tommy Hawkham. The first inning, the Lawrence County Wildcats scored three runs. Jim Bob Cooter got a little antsy, he gave up a home run on the first batter. The first three batters up for Lincoln County will be Whaley, Gentry, and Sis. On the mound for Lawrence County is Michael Kennedy. Well, I hope John is good with his bat as he is with his glove. Get us going here. We need to. Uh, Show some sign with their live right here and get back and get on the scoreboard right here all in the first inning. You mentioned Whaley was good with his glove in that first inning. He made a diving catch at shortstop and then he turned a 6 4 3 double play. And Ashley helped keep us out of a big inning. John stepping in. Michael Kennedy on the mound for Lawrence County. Their catcher is Boone Yokely. And here we go with the first pitch for the Falcons in the bottom of the first. Way inside. John had to dive back to keep him getting hit right there. We don't appreciate people throwing at us now. Don't hit our boys. Don't hit my boys. Whaley on the year is batting 370. Three home runs, 10 strikeouts. He has hit some long balls, one of them being a dedication ball at uh, Lebanon on their new field, first pitch of the game. So he opened up their field in high standards, and uh, we went on to win that game, 11-6. to six. Here comes the next pitch. That's a hard hit ball right in the gap in right center. Right fielder's going to come in holding to a single. I thought that might get on through there, but it's hard to get a judgment on the velocity. So John starts us off right with a single to right center. That's going to bring up left fielder number three, Jared Gentry. Jared's in right field tonight. So we got something clicking right here off start. Let's see if we can keep it going. Gentry has a 282 batting average on the year. There it takes ball one. I'd like to tell you folks at home that uh, you need to come out to the ballpark anytime you can. We'll try to give you a list of some of the home dates that's coming up. Uh, all the time here during the game, we're giving trivia questions. Lauren Milstead that goes to Lincoln County, County High just won a, a free car wash from the Buy Fast uh, Shell store out on the Huntsville Highway. And good folks out there. Uh, because she knew that Tom Glavin was the winner of today's Braves game, which was our trivia question, the first one. So we congratulate her, and if you're at home watching the game and want to get in on a lot of fun, a lot of good music, a lot of great baseball, come on out to Falcon Field. You can uh, look in the paper, usually get the schedule. You can call the school, 65-433-6505. Uh, you can listen to Jack Atchley in the morning on WYTM around 725. He's always... Uh, updating everything and telling the good folks here what's going on and we appreciate what he does uh, the count now is 2-0 i believe on jerry strike right down the middle 2-1 three, three one to count make him throw a few pitches here great time at the ballpark every time i come i'm always proud i, I took time to come there's a hard hit ball to shortstop. He boots it a little, but throws over to second. And the first, first baseman drops it, keeps him from getting the double play. So that ball was hit, being hit hard actually uh, was a bad omen there because it helped them to have time to make a double play, even with a couple of uh, boots. But the first baseman dropped it, and that helped us out there. Gentry grows 6 4 fielder's choice with an E3 on the first baseman. Nice job that time by Whaley. Uh, Kennedy on second. Hatsfield, Hartsfield on second base was distracted. Whaley didn't slide, you know, he kept his balance, made him have to off throw it. First baseman could not come up with a double play. That'll bring up number 21 here in the third spot. First baseman, Brandon Sisk. Takes a high, a ball one. Brandon Sisk batting 455 on the year with three home runs. Jim Cooter on deck. 
Brandon looking to take something deep right here. Ball two, two and oh. We appreciate this fine cable station bringing you this game tonight. Thanks for all the good things they do for us. And thanks to them for bringing sports in Lincoln County to the airwaves. Stride. So 2-1 on Brandon. One down. Kennedy's got a pretty hard fastball here. Looks like that thing might be in the middle 80s. Very short delivery, too. He just gets ready, and then that arm is coming at you right before you know it. That ball is there. Kennedy on the year has a 2.38 ERA. He has pitched 17.2 innings. Wow. So he don't allow many runs. He's only walked six batters. 2-2 two, two the count. Throws over to first. Runner back safely. And I hope we'll keep a little pressure on him first base. I like to see a pitcher throwing over a lot. That means you've got him distracted a little, or at least you gain his respect. And I'm sure he doesn't want a stolen base right here early in the first inning that might help us uh, score a run on a base hit. Here's the next pitch. Inside. Brandon hangs on, fouls it down the first baseline. South Paul Production Promo. If you would like a copy of this broadcast or any of our programs, send your check or money order for $15 plus $3 shipping and handling to South Paul Productions, 65 Dukes Lane, Kelso, Tennessee, 37348. And we will get your copy out to That you. ball's hit hard. Get it gone, baby. That ball's out of here. Two run homer. Gets the Falcons back in the game. Brandon Sis done gone deep for the fourth time this year. And that ball went out of here like a rocket. Just really got a hope of that one. Took it down the right field line. D down the right field line. So Falcons back in the game. That's our answer. That's what you like to do. Answer back. That'll get the morale back up and the momentum going again. It's going to bring up number 23, Jim Cooter, to the plate next. Pitcher versus pitcher right here. Yep. He was hoping for a pitch to hit, and he got it, and he done something with it. So that makes the score 3-2. That'll bring up the pitcher, Jim Cooter. High and away, fastball, strike one. Looks like Cooter, Cooter really tried to take that one down the line, just like Sisk did. Good swing. Had a good cut, foul back, 0-2. Real good cut. And here we go again. Way high, chin music. Ball one. One two's the count. Three two, Lawrence County, bottom of the first. Jim Bob Cooter. High again. So I think we shook the pitcher a little bit. That's good. Mr. Kennedy's ERA is going up as we speak. He gets ready to deliver. Foul back. Jim Bob hanging in there, P vine with him. This is a pretty big situation. I, I considered in the, right here, even in the first inning, early in the game, uh, where you want to show the pitcher, uh, yeah, we got we got an answer for everything y'all got. So Jim Bob doing his best to uh, stay in there and hang with him. He gets ready. The guy has a short delivery. Ball high. A little more chin music there. Uh, Oh, full count. Coach Hawes out from third base, win the battle, and that's what it is, a battle right here. Ball outside, Jim wins the battle. So base runner first on the ball. 
good eyes that time, but Cooter to watch the ball, get his ball four and get a walk to the first base. And I was going to bring up Thomas Osteen, center fielder, number five. Coach Mike James going out to talk to his pitcher, talk and things we've over. We've got a courtesy runner coming in for the pitcher, number 13, Allen McAllister. So Allen will tune up at first base and see if he can keep the pitcher's attention on him a little bit. And Thomas will step in here hoping to keep this thing going. One away, one away, McAllister pinch run on first base for Jim Bob Cooter. In the bat is Thomas Osteen. Osteen on the year is batting 256. One out, bottom of the first, 3 2, Lawrence County. Thomas has been having a hard time here lately and uh, trying to get back in the groove. There's a good hit right up the middle. All right, excuse me, right through the gap between short and third. That'll bring McAllister around second there and holding up. And Thomas is on with a single. So two runners on now. And that's going to bring us up to Joey Ashby, second baseman tonight. Joey's uh, been playing third base in, in the outfield and doing a fine job of pitching. I'm sorry, I skipped, uh, I skipped a man in the lineup here, and I would have known better. This is Matty Smith's uh, spot, our catcher, number 16. Matt's been doing a good job. Matt's batting 225 on the year. He's got runners on first and second, one out. Kennedy gets ready with the first pitch. There it is, a hard hit ball right up the middle, right off beyond the second baseman's glove. That's gonna score a run, or at least we're gonna send him. It's gonna be a play at the plate. He's safe, he's safe. He gets around the catcher's tag. So great running by McAllister there, turning on the, the afterburners and gets home and we've tied this game up, folks. Hard hit ball by Thomas Osteen right up the middle. I'm sorry, Matt Smith. Boy, wake up, Tommy. Got me excited here. Now that'll bring up Joey Ashby, number 10, second baseman. And uh, Matt Smith's got an RBI single. Hard hit ball right up the middle. Joey Ashby, a 324 batting average on the year. It's a good call that time by manager Sloan. Get a pinch runner on first. If it'd been Jim Bob Cooter, it might have been out at home. That was a good call. <laughs> Trying to keep some fresh legs in the game. I seen him run. Plus, uh, that wasn't done, no, I'll be honest with you. That wasn't done because Jim Bob's slow. That was done because you like to get your pitcher back in and let him rest. And in high school now, you can you can do a courtesy runner for the catcher and the pitcher. And uh, that helps speed up the game, too, between innings so everybody's ready. So, uh, But we'll take advantage of it every time we get. And that was good running by the sophomore, Allie McAllister. And Joey's up now. Strike on the inside corner. Hold one to count. So Lawrence County came up with uh, three hits in the um, top of the first inning and the Falcons have come right back and answered. Ooh. Ball inside. There's a hard hit ball. Come on, second baseman throws over, gets away from second baseman. Well, going to make another run score. Base runner's going to move up from second. Sorry. Oh, they're calling our base runner out at second now, trying to make it over Joey. But on the hard hit ball to first base, he tries to go to second to get the double play. And gets away from second baseman. Going to let a run come in. Falcons go up 4-3. And uh, Joey made things happen by hitting that ball hard. That's going to bring up number four. And I'm not sure where he's playing, that left field. John Holt. So, Falcons go back on top. Can't give a Joey a RBI on that, but uh, his bat made it happen. Uh, we'll score that on the air by the uh, second baseman. Hard hit ball by John Holt down the line, trailing foul. Everybody's putting some wood on the ball here. No K's. I like to see that first inning. Everybody's, we mean business tonight. Go Mighty Birds. So, Falcon batters have got the uh, crowd stirred up and, uh, and I hope we got the other team trembling a little bit here. They know we, we're here to play. Here comes the next pitch from Kennedy. Inside, almost hits him. John turns with the pitch there. 
Got a 1 1 count. So. I couldn't make sure. I wrote down right field. Pitches away, looks to be a ball. Hope swings, miss, strike two. Two twos the count. Two outs, bottom of the first, four three, Lincoln County. So we've had three singles and a home run here. And And here's the next pitch, John Holt, he fouls it back. Everybody's in there hanging in P-Vine. Count 2-2. Two, two. So we're not gonna go down easy. Every batter here, so I can already tell they've made up their mind tonight that they're, they're going up there and meaning business. And that's a good sign to see. Four runs right here with only one out in the first. Two outs, I apologize, before I got, they got the runner at second. John hanging in. Oh, got called third strike. That'll do it for the first inning. Falcons leave one base runner on base. Score four runs on a two-run homer being highlighted by Brandon Sisk. And we'll be right back. Had any trouble with your feet lately? Come in and visit the Foot Clinic. Dr. Tim Merrill brings you the expertise and special attention needed for even the most difficult cases. Welcome to Dr. Merrill's office. Bunions, ingrown toenails, corns, heel spurs, and even diabetes foot care. You may be surprised to know that your feet are not supposed to hurt. If you are having a foot problem, you are not alone. 60% of the population seeks help for foot problems every year. And now, Lincoln County offers Dr. Tim Merrill. How are you? I'm Dr. Merrill. Tim brings you an extensive background in foot and ankle care. Dr. Tim Merrill takes great pride in the quality of care and provides a caring environment in his office on the Fable Bypass 2250 Thornton Taylor Parkway, Suite B. Dr. Tim Merrill utilizes his in-office x-ray facility and many other techniques to treat your foot condition effectively for your quick return to work, school, or play. Call the foot clinic today at 433-9600 and get back on your feet. 162, I believe. Back here at the bird cage. 72. Top a couple of three-run homers by uh, Gary Sheffield and Vinny Castillo. Lincoln County leads four to three. Batters up for Lawrence County will be Boone Yokely, Eric Johnson, and Chad Shannon. Shannon had a leadoff home run in the first inning. And so we're back. Jim Cooter gets ready for first pitch, low and outside. Ball one. This guy's got an interesting name, Boone Yokely. <laughs> Tell us what Boone's done on the season, or have you already? Boone Yokely is batting 200. Two hits, 10 at bats. All right. Here's the next pitch. Oh, 3-1 the count. So we're going to try to hang in here and get him. Don't want to let them get nothing started off here in the second. There's the next pitch. Ball inside. So a leadoff walk to Boone Yokely. Cooter again is throwing a lot of balls in his count. Last, the first inning he at least went three balls in just about every batter, and this time he walks his first batter. So Cooter needs to settle down. You know, start, start throwing some strikes and make these guys hit the ball. That's going to bring up number 30, the right fielder, Eric Johnson. Tried to bunt. Bunt's foul. Runner was moving on the play. They had to hit and run on. And this batter was trying to move the other, the base runner up into scoring position. So 0-1 to count. Johnson, two at-bats this year, two strikeouts. Do their stats tell uh, how many sacrifice bunts he has? And let's see how good he is a bunter. Pitch over to first base. They get the runner and running. And they fired a second. Got the runner in a run down. Cooter with the ball. And over to Joey Ashby, second baseman. And uh, we have an out at first, folks. Caught the runner sleeping just a little bit on first base and threw over and got him in a run down. 
And I won't tell you the combination because it was like a, a four, three, six, two, twelve, eight. And uh, we'll just go with it and, and be glad we got out number one. So the bases are clean again. Put that down in your scorebook as a caught stealing, I guess. Jim Bob. Bob comes in there, I'm sorry, with a 0 1. Strike. So he's ahead of the batter, who's the leadoff man. Number 12, Chad Shannon. No, no, I'm sorry. We still got Eric Johnson up. I'm getting ahead of myself. Eric Johnson has no sacrifices on the year. Two at bats, two strikeouts. Two count goes 2 2, yes, sir. Ball inside makes 3 2 count, so Jim Bob again goes three balls on the batter. That's the fifth batter he's had three balls against, and all that. But he lets him out a little bit. Great play by Matt Smith. And runner's going to be, runner was in the baseline. So he is going to be called out by the umpire. If you folks seen that on home, he was running inside the baseline and he has to be outside the baseline when he's running down first base, even if there isn't a strike. So we're going to catch a break there and that's going to be the second out of the inning on the K to Eric Johnson. And that's going to bring up number 12, the center fielder, Chad Shannon. It was a good call. So two down here in the top of the second. See Coach Mike Holt, our athletic director at Lincoln County High, has walked into the booth. We're going to see if we can get him on in a few minutes, find out what's going on with all our sports here at Lincoln County, and just see what good information he's got. He's like a walking computer. Hard hit ball down first baseline, but foul. Just right off the line. Going to bring count 0-2. On Chad Shannon, who led off this game with a home run. To which we came back and answered. O2 count, two outs, 4-3, Lincoln County, top of the second. Cooter's pitch is high and outside, ball one. One to the count. Good curveball. Right to John Whaley at short. He'll make the toss over to first. And that'll do it for Lawrence County. No runs here in the second inning. Three up, three down. We'll be right back. This is a South Paul Television production. Carter's Drug Store on the east side of the Fayetteville Square has the highest quality pharmacy with the best pharmaceutical staff anywhere. Not only is Carter's a drug store, Carter's has a wide selection of Hallmark cards for every occasion. Just walk in the door at Carter's and you will see many friendly faces that will help you in any way possible. For the looks you love in beauty products to the most lovely monogram sterling silver jewelry, Carter's has it all. For that special gift or decorating your own home, Carter's has the most unique items to choose from. Carter's has a great selection of picture frames and you can find baby gifts to anniversary gifts. When you absolutely don't know what gift to get, just come in and look around for the best gift ideas anywhere. Stay in good health with all the vitamin supplements that Carter's has to choose from. And the next time you need a prescription filled, let their highly trained and professional pharmacist fill your needs. The kind service that we have all come to depend on 365 days a year, Carter's Drug Store, where everybody goes. And that's going to take us into the bottom of the second here. Falcons send up. Uh, the first batter is the DH, number 15, Joey Miller. We're proud to have Coach Holt with us here in the, in the booth. Thanks for coming up, Coach. It's a good game going in. Well, so far. A lot that's of excitement. Of, that's what we like to see. Uh, didn't look good there at the first, but the kids bounced back and got it back to four and three, so hopefully we can hold on. Jim Bob looked a little better in, the, in that uh, in that inning pitching-wise, and, and so I, that's, uh, that's good to hear. Good to hear, or good to see, I guess. Uh, I know you as a basketball coach are uh, probably a little bit jittery here tonight, uh, just uh, interested in who's going to win the NCAA championship uh, with Indiana and Maryland going tonight. Uh, I know our <laughs> former coach is an Indiana kid. Two of our coaches there are tennis coach. I guess Troy is. And uh, so Miller grounds out to the uh, first baseman, and that'll do it. That'll be one down here in the bottom of the second. That's going to bring up the leadoff batter, number 24, John Whaley. 
what's going on, Coach? We got uh, golf, soccer, well, tennis, Well, we've got track. Uh, really the springtime is the busiest time for uh, uh, athletics. We have five sports going on at the same time. We got baseball, of course, and then softball, track, uh, tennis, and soccer. And of course, the boys' soccer team. It's girls and boys tennis and girls and boys track. And uh, so it's always it's always uh, a real busy time. Uh, got a lot of athletes participating, uh, a lot of places to be. Every night there's some place to go. Uh, every night there's kids uh, participating and representing Lincoln County, you know, and we've had some kind of exciting things. Uh, the uh, soccer team uh, opened up the soccer field down there the other night with a 1-1 tie with Coffee County, which I believe that makes them 1-0-1 uh, -oh in the good. conference. That's good. So that's a good start for them. Um, of course, the tennis team uh, played today, and it didn't get the results. They played, uh, had a match with uh, Tallahoma, which is probably the better uh, girls and boys team in the conference. Uh, but they have, uh, the girls have won, I believe, two and, and, and done real well there. Uh, track, I think uh, the boys won the first track meet uh, in, in quite a few years here the other night. Uh, I believe it was against Blackman. Um, yes, sir. And, uh, so that was great to see that. Uh, got some kids really doing well. They got a, a relay team doing very well. So uh, uh, just a lot of activity going on here at Lincoln County. All right, that's got us here with uh, John Whaley still up 2-2. One down. And the next pitch from Michael Kennedy. Ball tapped to second base. Jay Hartsfield up with it over to the first baseman and that'll do it. One down, 4-3 on the play. <laughs> Going to send up Jerry Gentry, number three. Coach, we uh, uh, we love spring sports, <laughs> um, and we love the weather. And finally, now it's it's starting to turn warm, and the grass is greened up real good, and and it makes it a lot more fun to go, and it likes uh, helps the attendance exactly uh, too. And we. Well, the fields, both fields, if you haven't seen the baseball field here, it's in great shape. And uh, Coach Smith with the soccer, uh, softball field has done a real good job. Uh, you know, two of the finest uh, facilities. Uh, you know, and, and uh, so it's good. To, it's it's real good to, to see that everything is greened up and looks pretty and makes it even feel more like baseball weather. Jared fouls the ball back. Makes you count 0-2 on him. All righty. Let's talk about soccer. Uh, soccer, uh, I believe, uh, I'm not sure where they go. Uh, they go, um, they've got a conference. Uh, a flare ball from Jerry Gentry, uh, but second baseman Hartsfield gets back and uh, makes the catch. And that's going to do it for the uh, Mighty Birds here in the bottom of the second. We'll be right back. This is a Southpaw production. Thank you for calling Cars Plus. Can I help you? Hi, I'm Steve McQuarter, owner of Cars Plus. We're located in Park City, Tennessee on Huntsville Highway. We specialize in trucks, cars, vans, and sport utility vehicles. At Cars Plus, we offer friendly hometown service, no high pressure sales, and have financing available along with a standing warranty program. We service and inspect all our vehicles. My father, Ronnie McQuarter, former owner of Ron 66, heads our service department with over 35 years experience. Here at Cars Plus, we handle everything from your old classics to your new classics, and anything in between. So come by and see us at Top Park City Hill, or give us a call at 433-1922. All right, we're back here, top of the third. Score 4-3, Falcons. I don't know who their first batter is up here, but I'll find out. Oh, Chris Scott, shortstop, number 17. Chris had an infield single in the first inning, later scored on an RBI single from Chris Lanning. Strike, 1-1 one, one to count. Jim Bob seems to settle down a little bit better groove, Coach. Don't you think he's got a little bit better each inning? 
Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, Jim Bob was that kind of player. I hate to bring up basketball, but, you know, as the season got on, he, he always got better. So hopefully he'll do that with the pitching. Uh, uh, you know, we were visiting a little bit about the soccer program. There's a sharp hit ball down to the third baseman. He throws a little wild, and the runner is out on the tag. Out on the tag. The throw from third base is a little high, but Brandon brought the glove down real quick and uh, made the tag on the runner even though he was off the base. So one down. Great stop by Brandon over there. That sure was. Uh, but the soccer team, like I said, I believe they're 0-1 and uh, one with a tie. Uh, and I, you know, it, for the years that I've been here, that's the best. Uh, Coach Simafu uh, done a real, has done a real good job. Uh, Jason Bertram and um, uh, Chris Dye helping him out. Uh, I think they got 30 some kids out. Uh, one great. of the thing, one of the things you know that I think they've done is just uh, you know they're just getting better and better and building the program and hopefully that will continue. Uh, one of the things I don't know that many people know about uh, next year, uh, we're going to start a girls' volleyball program. Great. Uh, we've got that in the works. Uh, got good. a coach hired, uh, Don Malone. That's there's the play. Uh, first baseman, baseman throws over to the pitcher, and that's going to get Nathan Hartsville at first on the 3-1 play. Two down now. Yeah, we're glad to hear. So, that's one of the things off my wish list if we're going to have a girls volleyball. Well, I think that, that's a great sport and good use of the gym. Yeah, they'll, uh, and good they'll start their program uh, next fall. Uh, and they've already uh, tentatively got some uh, kids signed up and uh, tryouts will be later on in May. And uh, Coach Malone, who uh, also teaches in the Ag Department, will be the, the coach. And uh, we're right now, uh, she's working on getting the schedule together and, and putting something together for volleyball. So we're excited about that, getting started uh, for the girls. And that's a fall sport. Uh, right. It'll run uh, along the, the uh, you know, prior to basketball. So there's really not a conflict with the facility. And, right. and like you said, another added use for the facility. So we're excited about that beginning uh, oh, yeah. next year. And, and like I said, you know, uh, she had some tentative sign-ups. Uh, it looks like she's going to have maybe some 25 or 30 girls at least signed up to start with. Good. There's a little blooper out in shallow left. Going to fall in for a single right in nowhere's no man's land. It reminded me of the Beatles song, Nowhere. No, that's Nowhere Man. I was thinking that was Nowhere Land. And that's where that ball fell. So uh, Lawrence County still alive here in the top of the third with a little bloop single in left center. And that was Chris Lanning. That's going to bring up the pitcher, number 22, Michael Kennedy. He got on on the E5 first inning. You know if we have any uh, seven foot tall girls that can help us in that volleyball? Uh, not that I know of yet, but uh, six, we're six, six, still, eight. recruiting still early, so okay. you know they uh, they still working on that. But uh, you know the well, other that'll th be a lot of fun. I yeah, it really will be. And it, it's good to see. And, and of course, you know, I, it it's hard to believe, but uh, just around the corner, you have uh, starting in the first of May, which is you know not that far away now that we're in April, and and. Uh, you know, spring football starts. So there's a lot of activities going on. And, and uh, I know the girls' basketball team has got uh, several girls in AAU and playing in tournaments, and as well as the boys. And uh, we've got uh, f uh, actually three teams. We got a group of 13s, 14s, and, and 16s. And so there's a lot of activity going on, and there always is in the spring. And, and uh, you know, it's just it's it's just good to see that many kids involved in the programs uh, that we do have. Yes, sir. Are you. Hang around here a minute and talk to us some more. This is real interesting. That's a 2-2 count. There's a hard hit ball, not very hard hit, to a shortstop. John Welly makes the play over, and he's safe at first. So he beats out the infield hit, and you can just see that one developed. That's going to put runners at first and second here with two out. So Lawrence County trying to mount a little bit of a thing. That was their sixth hit of the night. On a little infield single. It's going to bring up third baseman number five, Nathan Willis. He was out with a little line out to the shortstop. No, that was the great play made in the first inning by uh, John Whaley on the hard line out. So if he wants to do that again, that'll be fine with us. Swing and a miss, strike one. Willis has 11 strikeouts on the year. Looking for number 12 right here. He's a 160 batter. 1-1 one, one to count. So here's our chance to get out of this inning with a 160 batter. 
Does that mean? Well, we'll let him pitch. Ball way outside. Runner's going to try for third. Matt Smith throws over. Almost got him. A little bit off the bag. That's okay. Runners move up second, third. Count goes 1-1 one, one on Nathan Willis. 2-1. No harm done that time. No run scored. Cooter can still get out of this inning. No problem. He's got a 160 batter with 11 strikeouts. There's a swing and a miss for strike two. He's got a good looking swing, but he must not make a connection much of the time. So hopefully right here we can do it again. Pops this and back out of play. Count stands 2-2. Two, two. two outs here in the top of the third. Well, Coach Holt's got me excited thinking about volleyball. Huh? <laughs> Pop up. Right, so hopefully we're out of this. Uh, first baseman Brandon Sisk under the ball, and that'll do it out three. So even though the, they get uh, two infield, two hits, we keep them on base and don't let them score, and that'll do it. That's third out, and we'll be right back with the top of the fourth inning. This is a Southpaw Television production. Hey, Jimmy, you up for lunch? Man, you work too hard. You're making us all look bad. Oh, well, later. Introducing the Intruder Volusia from Suzuki. Jimmy, take two weeks off. That's it. I won't take no for an answer. It's all you need to get away. This is the place, the place where I can build my cabin and get away from it all. With a little help from my all new Suzuki Quad Runner Iger 400. I didn't spend much and it's got all the features I need so I can build my cabin and get away from it all. Get into the great outdoors, get back to nature. Get back on my Iger. Get some ice, get some x-rays, get a contractor. And we're back. Falcons come to bat here in the bottom of the third, hoping to uh, add to this score, 4-3. We are ahead, and this is the man that helped make us ahead with a two-run shot in the first inning that, that got us going. So Brandon Sisk up to bat here, leading off the third. Ball low and inside. Yeah, so Coach Hope, we, we appreciate you coming up and being with us tonight. and, and uh, Thanks for all the information. You come back anytime. Well, I appreciate you having us, and I appreciate what y'all do here to, to promote uh, Lincoln County Athletics. And uh, I would like to say something. Uh, yes, sir. Jared Parsons, uh, his dad told me just a few minutes ago that he's getting ready to sign a golf scholarship at Martin Methodist. So that's just another one of our athletes getting a college education with a, a little help. Uh, uh, with the athletic part of it, so I want to make sure everybody knows that. And you see Jared or his dad uh, congratulate him for uh, that's an accomplishment that we're all quite proud of. Oh yes, sir. We're proud of that too, and proud of Jared, and uh, and he is a great golfer, and we feel like we're gonna watch him on the PGA one year, and well, not too long. I just hope he remembers us when that happens, right? Well, I, for all I the do. donations we can get, and all and, the and, donations, and, and and all that. Well, listen, I appreciate it, and you guys do a great job, and uh, thanks a lot for. What you do here, and 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 uh, I'll come back anytime you need somebody to fill some time. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. Uh -huh. Coach Mike Holt with us here tonight, the AD at Lincoln County High School, and Brandon's up still, and uh, the count is two-two on Brandon. Michael Kennedy fixing to come in with the next pitch, foul back out of play down third base line, way out of play back in the trees. 2-2 count, Sisk staying alive. He did have a two-run homer in the first. Got this Mighty Birds team going. Michael Kennedy still seems strong here in early innings. There's a ball hit. And it's pretty hey, deep, but the right fielder's That's back, and we know they got good gloves. So he drops that ball. I thought he made the catch. And Brandon's in with a lead-off double. And I know from once in Lawrence County play in the past that they got great outfielders, but that ball was hit back at the uh, warning track there in dead center. So Brandon's in with a stand-up double to go with his two-run homer in the first. He's having a good night. He's just coming back for some uh, back spasms. Was out for three or four games and then uh, DH'd a couple games and. 
and he's back uh, at playing first base tonight. That's going to bring up the pitcher, Jim Cooter, number 23. So we're hoping to add on to this tally here. Ball outside. Jim Bob's first first at bat, he walked. Kennedy readies with the pitch. Foul back. One one to count, bottom of the third, four three, Lincoln County leads. Brandon Sisk is on second base for the leadoff single. Link leadoff double. Throw another ball or two into the home plate umpire. We fouled a few back here and he's getting low. If you'll notice at home, the umpire has a little bag on his right hip, and that's where he keeps some spare balls. Everybody around baseball knows that, but I didn't know if I, everybody at home knew it, so I wanted you to know he wasn't carrying a purse. There's the next pitch. Ball, low and outside. So Jim Bob flirting around here with him a little bit. Waiting for something juicy. Foul back again. Make the count 2-2. Two, two. Brandon standing out second. He's getting tired of standing there, I can tell. He'd like for somebody to move him on around. Jim Bob, get a hit, move me. We'll get back in the dugout and rest a little bit. Speaking of the dugouts, these are some beautiful dugouts. I don't know if you'll find any better in the state. Good hard concrete dugouts. Yes, sir, we're proud of them here. Ball count goes 3-2, full count on Jim. So we're, we're working Mr. Kennedy into a little bit of a jam. I believe time about deserves fair play. It's his turn to sweat a little. Here's the next pitch. Jim Bob hangs in there. He couldn't afford to let that and get by. Uh, couldn't afford the third strike count. So he fouls that one off and stays alive. That's the fourth ball. He's fouled back here this at bat, having a good at bat. He went full with uh, just about this ideal situation in the, or same situation in the last inning and ended up drawing a walk. Kennedy readies with a the pitch. There's a pop-up. Shallow outfield. Second baseman's back, makes the play. And that'll do it one, one down here in the uh, bottom of the third. Score that uh, pop out to the number four player. It's going to bring up Thomas Osteen, who had a single in his first at bat. Hard hit ball to left center. So one down here in the bottom of the third. Runner second. Ball high. 1 0 to Thomas. Coach Sloan down at third base is uh, hoping some more stuff's going to happen right here. He's ready to wave the runner on on a single. I can tell you he'll, he won't hesitate a minute to send a runner on a play that he thinks he can make it on. Count goes 2-0 on Tom. They're making their pitcher throw a lot of pitches, not swinging at many bad pitches tonight. And hopefully that'll wear him out sooner than I think he's getting more out because all three of those pitches were high. So 3-0 the count on Thomas Osteen. Big good thing to wear him out because he is a 2.38 ERA pitcher with only six, six base on ball and one strikeout since Kennedy. According to Knoxville Stars, he is ranked as the 45th best player in the state. Made all district in 2000. He's one of their big dogs. So it'd just be an extra feather in our cap if we can beat him tonight. Thomas Q's one off the short handle of his bat. He's going to be got him, got him barely at first base. Some quick leg work by the pitcher there, I believe. Yes, sir. Pitcher got over, got that ball, and gets him by an eyelash. 
Buying or selling? Let Century 21 AAA Associates assist you through your real estate transaction. We are professional realtors dedicated to integrity, service, and progressive marketing. We offer free market analysis to anyone considering the sale of their home or property. Our listings at Century 21 get far-reaching exposure through two multiple listing services, covering Kentucky, Tennessee, and Alabama. We're putting hundreds of agents to work for you. You can access us on the internet, view our advertisements in Huntsville, Alabama, locally in the Exchange, or the Real Estate Showcase of Lincoln County. We offer building lots and acreage, starter homes to executive manors, farms, prime hunting land, commercial and investment properties. Whatever you're looking for, we can help you find it. Located two blocks south of the Lincoln County High School, Century 21 AAA feels that our customers deserve and will receive the finest service offered by any real estate organization. A pitch to Matt Smith. After fouling one down the third baseline, he goes to a 1-1 count. Pitcher made a great play on Thomas Osteen to score the one unassisted, make two outs here in the bottom of the third. So uh, Brandon let off the inning with a double, and we've stranded him so far, even though he's moved over to third. There's a little foul ball out of play down the first baseline. Makes the count 1-2 on Matt Smith. Osteen was called out at first on a very close call. Coach Sloan didn't like it. He gave the umpire an earful, but it did advance Sisk third base. Next pitch. That leans out and goes with it. Fouls it down the first baseline also. Count still 1-2. Yeah, we're two down here. Bottom of third. Gets him on his pitch there. That'll do it for the bottom of the third. Falcons still up 4-3. We'll be right back with the top of the fourth. It's very important to make those fabulous first impressions with a great looking you. Let the professionals at Maxine's Fashion House of Beauty help you with your plan right from the very start. Maxine's Fashion House of Beauty is the salon where professionals specialize in creative hairstyling designed to fit your own personality. Nancy Wheeler, Maureen Abels, Kay Johnson, Wanda Tipper, Zeldra and Wilma Buchanan are qualified to advise both men and women about ways to highlight all of your best features. For a hairstyle, cut, color, frost, perm, manicure or pedicure, what are you waiting for? And Maxine's features wolf tanning beds. They'll give you that deep, dark tan fast. Call Maxine's Fashion House of Beauty for an appointment at 433-6737 or stop by in 2250C Thornton Taylor Parkway in Fayetteville. Let the professionals at Maxine's help you find your own great style. And we're back here at top of the fourth. This is number 10, Brett Walker, coming up to bat. And here's the first pitch from Jim Bob Cooter. Curve ball, not to the umpire suiting though. I thought it was in there, but it's ball one. So, we're here, 4-3 Falcons. Strike outside corner, 1-1 one, one to count. We'd like to thank all of our wonderful sponsors for bringing you this game tonight. Howard Bentley's, Maxine's House of Beauty, Century 21 AAA Associates, Carter's Drug, White's Motorsports, Dr. Tim Merrow at the Foot Clinic, uh, Tracks and Trails, Taxidermy, Cars Plus, and anybody else I might have left out, I think I got all nine. We are really appreciate them helping uh, bring Falcon Baseball to you folks, and we appreciate this fine cable station for showing it to you. There's a strikeout for Jim Bob to lead off the top of the fourth. And we'd like to tell you now that we've got our co-host Jeff Neal has uh, made it up to the booth here and he, along with Lee Jean and myself, is here to help us uh, through the rest of this game. Jeff, good to see you again. Good to see you, Tommy. Uh, tonight, if you missed the first inning, you probably missed all the scoring so far as the Falcons have had a uh, I worry about Sis because he takes over the team lead with four on the season. Strike right in there at number 28, their batter, which is... Muster, who, who is that batter? It is 
Boone Yoakum. Boone Yoakum, and he's a catcher tonight. Hitting an eight spot. Another swing and a miss strike two. Cooty comes in with a record of one and one and a 3.39 ERA on the season. Uh, they're looking for a second win on the mound this year with, the, with Ty Gentry and Yates with the team lead in victories. 0-2 pitch, got him, strike three, right down the center. Two outs quickly here in the fourth. So Kudu works quickly and gets the second out of this inning. It'll bring up the ninth place hitter, number 30, Eric Johnson, the right fielder. And he caved the first time, so maybe he'll let the streak yeah, stay for, going here. 0 for 1 on the night so far is Johnson. He's 0 for on the year. 0 for on the year. Okay, oh. it. And that's a one ball, 1-0. Oh, boy, that ball looked good. 1-0, a high. It was a little high, 1-0. 0 for 3 with 3 strikeouts. So he's hopefully he can maybe make it 4 Ks in a row. Foul back, straight up. And it's a 1-1 one, one count, oh. even, even count. Oh, 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 I hope oh, 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 didn't get your eye Bill Hawkins. You're talked about right behind yeah, us. Yeah, it so got somebody's because we heard the thud as it hit the side of the vehicle get, behind us. I hope we didn't get box. yours. 1-1, one, one, that's 2-1. That's low. It's not a big district game for the Falcons. Is it coming in 6-8, and 0-3 oh in district play. And the district win very badly uh, here this evening. Uh, and they hadn't been a very good road team this year as well as home home wins have been very plentiful, but on the road it's not been a, a pretty sight for the Falcons this season. 3-1 to count to Johnson. Top of the fourth inning, Falcons four, Wildcats three. And that was foul tip right there. And I'd like to thank my friend Steve who just brought us up a good piece of pepperoni pizza brought over to the ballpark here we have pizza every night in our concession stand folks you want to eat out one night come out to the ballpark oh. eat out uh, we uh, get our pizza from bucks pizza and they do an awful good job of uh, so. making some of the fine italian uh fare jo johnson walks right there he's on it first and he's gonna bring the leadoff batter up number 12 the center fielder chad shannon chad shannon is gonna bring him up and chad shannon in the first inning had a home run I take a moment to tell all you Fa Falcon fans that the Lady Falcon softball team will be playing safe. We'll be playing Monday night, the 15th, Franklin County at home. JV begins at 5 o'clock. Varsity begins at 7 o'clock. Wednesday, April the 17th, we'll be playing also Tullahoma at home. JV begins at 5 and Varsity begins at 7. That is Lady Falcon softball. Two big district games and the Falcons surely There's a hard hit ball to shortstop. John Whaley's over, going to make the long throw across and gets him by an eyelash. By a half a step, an eighth of a step. That's the third out of the inning. That'll do it right here in the top of the fourth. A great play. And folks, we'll be right back. This is a Southpaw production. We got two. Sportsmen and women of Lincoln County, if you trot line, limb line, jug line, or use four pound to 40 pound test on your regular line, the next time the big one doesn't get away, bring your cash to Tracks and Trails Taxidermy and let them mount your hog in its natural setting for a memory that'll last you a lifetime. Aaron Lamb and his fine crew at Tracks and Trails are also the best around these parts at giving you hunters, young and old, state of the art mounting on that trophy buck or other big game prize you worked your butt off to get. And turkey hunters, you've got to see what Tracks and Trails can do with that big jake. Tracks and Trails also mount fox, bobcat, squirrel, mink, otter, beaver, raccoon, ducks, and all kinds, and even the big ones. Bear, elk, moose, buffalo, mule deer, rams, and on and on. Right now, we're even doing the king of the jungle, a lion. So come on out to Tracks and Trails at 232 Plantville School Road or call us at 937-7550. At Tracks and Trails, we bring your memories home to roost. And we're back. Gang's all here. Ain't this a good looking bunch? <laughs> we're proud to have Coach uh, Smith with us from the Lady Falcon softball team. They're off tonight. I think they got a game tomorrow night. We appreciate you coming up and spending a little time with us. Uh, as we get into the inning here, we want you to tell us what's going on with Lady Falcon softball. We're going to send up number 10, Joey Ashby, first. And hoping to do some damage here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, like I said, uh, we're seven six right now, uh, struggling just a little bit in the district. We're zero three, but uh, hopefully the weather's going to change. Uh, it's a great night tonight, and hopefully we'll get some good weather. We've had some bad weather. Not making any excuses, but uh, oh no, it's know, been bad. Baseball and softball is meant to be played in good weather. There's a ground ball down the first baseman. He boosts the ball, so Joey's going to be on the E three and get us going right here in the bottom of the fourth. 
that was so routine that he, I think he got a little uh, lazadaisical with it and it, it, it bloopered around him there. So almost, Joey's on first base. Does that almost, ever happen in softball? Almost Bill Buckner play, wasn't it? No, that was almost Bill Buckner. <laughs> 86. Wasn't that 86 when that happened? Yeah, all them World Red, Series, all them Red playoffs. Sox fans will be upset, won't they? Oh, yes, sir. They, they don't like in. talk. <laughs> They've had it bad since, uh, since they got rid of Babe Ruth. They got that jinx, they said. Yep. The curse of the Babe. I've been reading a lot about Babe Ruth here lately, and uh, I wish I could tell the folks at home uh, everything on my mind about Babe Ruth. It was a... Uh, he had an interesting life. John Holt tries to bunt, but it goes foul. Good effort. He'll come back, try again. So you guys are eight and six? Uh, we're seven and six. Seven and uh, six. Uh, big district game tomorrow versus Shovel up, up at their place. Yep. Uh, we play at five JVs, varsity's at seven. And then we're back home Thursday against Lawrenceburg. Uh, we play five and seven, varsity, uh, JV and varsity, Thursday night at home. So. Now, the folks uh, will be seeing this or uh, be on April the 9th, so uh, uh, tell us anything you got going on that week, and let's see if we can't get some folks out to watch Lady Falcon softball. Okay. Uh, the, April 15th, uh, we got a home game, and April 17th, we got a home game. Both of them, uh, JV will be at 5 and varsity at 7 on both those nights. And then uh, big night for everybody will be April 19th and 20th, our border battle tournament. I've got 28 teams coming from... Uh, all of the all state over. in Alabama. We're using South Lincoln, City Park, our field. Uh, and yes, all the sir. business people are glad we're doing it. They get a lot of business. Oh, yes, sir. That brings in a big crowd in Lincoln County and the 28 teams. That is amazing. Coach, talk about so, some of the players this year, some of your senior leaders you expect to step up and lead your team. i uh, got eight seniors, uh, which is you know, which is good for this year, bad for next year. Uh, Megan Hoss is a pitcher, a three-year starter. At Lauren Bankson's catcher, uh, Crystal Weiser's first base, Victoria Taylor's a shortstop. And I got three senior outfielders, uh, Susan Mitchell, Elizabeth Chapman, and Ashley Rollins. So, uh, good group of seniors, and uh, hopefully, like I said, with the weather turned around, we're going to get things turned around. John Holt went down on the K for his second time tonight. Joey Miller's up. He makes a ground ball to shortstop. They're going to get the force out. No, they throw it away. They're helping us all they can. The ball gets in the right field. And that's going to let Joey get over to third base. And Joey Miller pull up his safe on the fielder's choice at first. So uh, let's score that in uh, E6, because I don't believe the second baseman could have ever reach that ball. And that's going to move Joey around to third. So that can happen to you. That's a, that's a big help for us. Let's score that E6. So Joey got the first on the air. And goes all the way around the third on the air by the shortstop uh, there. So Michael Smith, the pitcher, Michael Kennedy, I'm sorry, has um, worked himself into a little bit of a jam, Lee. Worked himself into a jam. He's got runners on the corner, one out. This is a big inning for Lincoln County. They lead 4-3. He put some more runs up on the board. And that brings up. Runner goes second. He's there safely. John Whaley comes up with runners on second and third, one down. Whaley on the night started the game off with a single and then grounded into a, an out with the sec, at second base in the second inning. There's a hard hit ball down third base line. They're going to come home, try to get the out at home. He misses it. Throw it away by the third baseman. That's going to let the runner come all the way around the third, and John Whaley's going to go down to second as the catcher can't find the ball. And now we got runners at second and third again and a new run on the board. So 5-3 the score. We're going to score that at E5 in my book. I don't know. How would you score that one, Coach? It's an E5. Uh, Joey was probably dead meat at home plate. Third baseman makes a bad throw. So the, the third error. got a couple good breaks right there. Yes, sir. A couple of the third error of the inning. That puts runners at second and third again here. All compliments of errors. We don't have a hit. Uh, pure hit this this inning, and that's going to bring Lawrence County coach out to talk to his uh, whole infield here. Not necessarily with the pitcher; he's doing a pretty good job. It's the fielders behind him. We're going to take a break right now, and uh, as they talk here on the mound, we'll be right back, folks. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Memphis Car Audio, it's the word on the street. To get the heart of the sound, you've got to get Memphis Car Audio. State-of-the-art car speakers, subwoofers, and amps. 
Get Memphis Car Audio installed today at Radio Shack. The entertainment of tomorrow you can enjoy today. Radio Shack has gone beyond AM and FM radio with XM Satellite Radio. It's the next generation radio with hundreds of digital crystal clear channels of music, news, sports, and entertainment. Radio Shack now gives you more ways to talk with Singular Wireless. Radio Shack is a Lincoln County authorized Singular Wireless dealer. And Radio Shack has plans to fit your every need. Stop in Radio Shack today for all the hot deals on the hottest technology. 1402 Huntsville Highway in the Bilo Shopping Center. Call 433-4933. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. We're back. Lawrence County's got their uh, infield settled down here just a little bit. And the batter up is Jerry Gentry, number three. First pitch to him is a ground ball to second base. Second baseman is uh, going to try to make the sure out at first. And another run will score, so RBI on the 4-3 uh, play on Jerry Gentry. He gets the credit for RBI, and that'll put us up 6-3. to three. Two down. Second baseman struggled a little bit there. He caught the ball behind him. He looked, yeah, he looked like he was almost scared to, that he was going to have to make the play. That's going to bring up Brandon Sisk, who has been hot on the night. Two-run home run the first inning and a leadoff double to deep center field in the second inning. So hopefully Brandon can bring this runner to third base. And there's another hard hit ball. That ball's back deep. Fielder's back. It's against the wall. And that's going to be a ground rule double as the ball gets stuck under the fence, we think. We think. We'll see if there's any argument from their coach. And right now we don't know, but we know we got another run on the board, and we know we got at least a double from Brandon Sisk. Lee, I thought that ball was out of here. He was very close to the fielder. Did hit the wall when he's trying to catch it. The ball got stuck underneath the mat. It's a controversial call right here. Does he? Is it a double because it got stuck, or does he get to stay at third because he pulled the ball out? Uh, if the kid would have left it alone, raised his hand, the umpire would have gone out. It had been a ground rule double, but since That's he did pull it out, uh, the rule says if you reach in there and get it. You can get all you can get. So Sis kept running, did a good job right there. So even though he's been triple, or been crippled here lately, <laughs> he come up with a triple. So Brandon looked like the couple games he got off did him a lot of good, because he has sure met the ball tonight. He's got a homer, a double, and a triple. What's next? Oh, he's looking for the cycle here. <laughs> yeah, and that brings up number 23, Jim Bob Cooters, to a 1-0 pitch. Coach, I've been to some of your ball games, and uh, even with all this excitement going on here tonight, and with a 7-3 Falcon lead, I can tell you that it's always fun at a Lady Falcon softball game. Y'all have a great crowd every time, some of the best food I ever eat, and a lot of uh, atmosphere going on. Your girls always play hard for you. They're always in the hunt, um, and uh, so we we just encourage everybody that's home to come out and see a Lady Falcon softball game. And with a big border battle coming up, will most of your games be out on your field? Or uh, as it is in most tournaments, will Lady Falcons be, uh, or will they scatter around and have to play at, at each of the other venues? No, we'll play most of our games at the City Park, uh, just because I need to be around where most of the teams are going to play. Um, but like I said, we'll have four teams playing at South Lincoln and four different teams playing here, pool play games. And then, uh, but I try to stay around where most of the teams are going to be in case things go wrong. Yes, sir. Yeah, somebody's got to <laughs> be on top of everything. Take control. Yep. Jim Bob goes, uh, is that full? 2-2 two, two on Jim Bob. Two down here. There's a the ground ball to short. He's going to have to make a long throw across the first, but he gets him, and that'll do it here for the Falcons. We put uh, three more runs on the board and uh, highlighted with a triple by Brandon Sisk and three errors on the uh, Lawrence County Wildcats, and that'll give us 7-3 lead. We'll be back here with the bottom of the field then in just a moment. It's always worth the drive to Howard Bentley. Drive a little, save a lot. Come see all we've got. It's always worth the drive to Howard Bentley. We'll save you money, the car or truck award-winning service too it's always worth the drive to howard bentley save you money 
I'm Howard Bentley from Howard Bentley Pontiac, GMC Oldsmobile, Toyota, Fayetteville, Tennessee. We've been a part of the Fayetteville Lincoln County community for over 18 years. Ever go into a dealership, come back six months later and not recognize anybody? Not at Howard Bentley's. Our sales force have been with us for years. We will save you money and give you award-winning service after the sale. We also have a full-size body shop to take care of all your body shop needs. That's Howard Bentley, Pontiac, GMC, Oldsmobile, Toyota, Fayetteville, Tennessee, a proud supporter of Lincoln County Baseball. It's always worth the drive to Howard Bentley. Save you money. All right, we're back here for the top of the fifth inning, and uh, again, we've got Coach Smith with us from the Lady Falcon softball team. Coach, we appreciate you coming up and being with us. We hope to... Uh, Get Southpaw Productions is working right now on trying to do a couple of Lady Falcon softball games, and we hope to get over there and see you because I always I know the excitement's always there, and it's fun to watch uh, girls play softball. Well, I appreciate it, and y'all do a good job. Thank you. We've got number 17 up at bat here, Chris Scott. He had an infield single and grounded out 5-3 in the third inning, so he's one for two on the night. And he leads off with a strike here, foul ball back. Ball just a little bit low on the curve by Jim Cooter. 1-1 one, one to count. And Jim Bob's and I still in a fairly good game after the first inning. Had a rough first inning, but settled down and thrown four, four complete innings so far. And 2-1 pitch right there at ball, ball two. So it's a 2-1 count to Scott, the uh, shortstop for the Wildcats of Lawrence County. And the rankings. Swing and a miss Top there. 20, 20 rankings are in AAA, Class 3A. Uh, number, let's see, the top 10 uh, start with Knoxville Collins, Clinton number nine over in near Knoxville, Tennessee. Number eight, Hardin County. Number seven, Columbia, a member of District 8 AAA. Number six, Cookville, a member of 7 AAA and also in our region. Number five, Dyersburg. Number four, Knoxville Farragut, the Admirals down there, eight and two record. Number three, Tennessee High in Bristol. Number two, Tullahoma in nearby Coffee County. And the number one team in the state, the Riverdale Warriors with a 13-0 record. And also ranked in the top 20, uh, number 19, the Falcons, Lincoln County with a 4-6 and six record. And number 12, the Lawrence County Wildcats with a 7-4 and four record. So we hope to take them to 7-5 and five here tonight. And we're looking like it here in the fifth inning with a 7-3 lead. And a strike by Jim Bob. Those were rankings were of a couple as of this morning, and the Falcons now are six and eight overall, of course, and looking for the seventh win of the season tonight, and looking pretty good so far with the four-run lead here at the top of the fifth inning. Runner on at first for the Wildcats, and hitting now number two Jay Hartsfield, the second Hartsfield, the second baseman for the Wildcats. A one the count. One and one high. Well, I don't know what was the matter with that pitch. A little high. One and one. Looking down the right field line in the bullpen, number 10, Brett Walker for Lawrence County is warming up. Swing and a miss, one and two. So, so the leadoff walk made Jim Bob a little mad, and he's ahead one, two here. So Cooter ahead, and there's a shot of Walker warming up for the Wildcats. One, two. Little fl flare out there near. It's for the shortstop, and it's safe. He beat it. Two runners oh, on now with nobody out. So Joey just couldn't get coordinated on that one. That was hard to get your balance on, and he was trying to hurry and make the play. And so we're going to give the guy an infield single. Runner, runner, in, runner in scoring position for the Wildcats, and he's asking the base umpire for to advance a base, but to no avail. As number 19 steps in for the Wildcats, the left fielder Chris Lanning, earlier singled in the third inning, one and one. Or two and two, sorry, two couple singles, first and third inning, he singled. So he's looking for his third hit of the night. And we're hoping he don't get it right here because that's going to probably bring a run in. Strike. Strike. Yep, right on the corner, 0 and 1. This Lawrence County team full of seniors. They have eight seniors on the club. So a veteran ball club is this Lawrence County Wildcat bunch. 1 and 1, even, outside. Two over for Lawrence County. Not a good batter Cooter wants to face right now. He's 450 on the year with four RBIs. And there's a single right up the middle. That's, that's going to one. force a run in at home. Osteen just bobbed it a little bit, but still couldn't have got the runner. It was 7-4 now is the score. It will score Scott on the RBI, RBI by landing. 
Oh. Lawrence County has something going here, no outs. They've already got one run in and two men on base. First and second occupied. That's gonna bring up the pitcher, number 22, Michael Kennedy. He reached on an E5 in the first inning and then had an infield single in the third. So he's one for two on the night. So we need to get out here and maybe a force out. Ball gets away from the catcher. That's gonna advance the runners over one base, so runners now at second and third. And again, areas are key, and one just happened right there. And that's second and third, nobody out, and the Wildcats have a great chance to make some more runs and possibly tie this ball game. Speaking of errors, there was an inning, earlier inning when the Wildcats had three errors in the field, and Lincoln Cannon was able to get three runs in that inning. Runners on second and third. Here's the next pitch. There's a pop-up. It's back, maybe out of play. Just barely over the net here and out of play, and thank goodness nobody was sitting right there in that area. Everybody's sort of back out of uh, sight here, but we got a good crowd tonight, one of our biggest crowds of the year. We appreciate that. Fan safety a big thing in baseball nowadays. And we don't want to hit, get hit with those foul balls. It's a dangerous, dangerous type game. If you sit real close, you better watch every pitch because you're liable to get hit with a ball or a bat these days. I will say you're about as safe at Falcon Field as you are any other field I've ever seen with the high nets we got around here. That one just happened to go straight up and come straight down. But uh, yeah, it's a great place to, to watch a game from. So that's why you see us right here from this position shooting through the net, which you barely can see on your screen. We think we've got fine camera work, one of the best camera men in the business, and we appreciate the good shots we get here. Kim Bob Reddy's with the next pitch. Got him. One down. So Kennedy strikes out right there. Big out. And two on, one out. It's going to bring up the third baseman, number five, Nathan Willis. Yeah, I was talking about the safety of the field. This is a very beautiful baseball field. The complex is beautiful. It was named the high school baseball field of the year by TWSAA in 1997. It's a beautiful complex. If you, you can probably see it on camera, but you can't get a good feel of how beautiful yeah, yeah, it is really if you can. come out and watch a baseball game. Yeah, you really can. It's really nice, and the, it's been manicured. You can tell it's been really taken care of, and you really take a lot of pride around here of, of, at, at this baseball field. Gets Ball Blake gets Smith, away. and nobody's going to go anywhere. So they, they just they'll stay right there. Second and third, one out. Smith gets a new ball, gives it back to Cooter, and we'll get started again. Need a, need a good out right here for Jim Bob to be able to get out of this jam. One one count, one out, bottom of the top of the fifth, seven four, Lincoln County. Jim Bob Cooter still on the mound. He's been there from the start, giving up four runs. According to Knoxville Stars, Cooter is the 21st best baseball player in the state of Tennessee. He made all district eight AAA in 2001. So that pitch foul back keeps the count. Also a, fine One, two. also a fine athlete in his own right playing three sports, and that's real hard to do in, in high school, in, in high school uh, athletics these days. Not only does he play three sports, he plays them well. Yes, very well. Yes, he does. Starter in football, basketball, and baseball. That's right. He's all region. There's a pop-up out of play back behind us. He's all region selection in football and as well. Um, basketball, of course, like you said, performed very well for the team this season. Did a very good job for them. I hope he can pull one out of the hat right here. One, one two, the count right here. Two Willis. One two pitch. Two two. It's outside. Good attempt. Good try. So the count even with two, with one out. Seven four. The score. Lincoln County up by three on the Wildcats of Lawrence County. So two LC square off right here tonight. Lincoln and Lawrence. Little flared Cooter tries to die for it. And second and throws the first. Got him. Two down. He'll score a run. That scores. Hartsfield makes it seven to five. So trade the um, run for the out. That time it's seven five now. Now up to bat is Brett Walker, the first baseman for Lawrence County. Tonight he is. He hit in a six four three double play and Cade in the fourth. So he's zero for two on the night, and I'm hoping he goes zero for three. Strike down the middle. Zero one to count. Walker's batting 240 on the year. He has struck out five times with two RBIs. Oh, outside. 1-1 one, one to count. 
Arcadia as a team this year hitting 227 so far in the early part of the season in 11 ball games. Jim Bob Reddy's next pitch. Oh, yeah. Swing and a miss on a little high yeah. pitch. That should have been ball two. We got a break there. Gone fishing. Got a break there. <laughs> went, went for the high stuff. I believe I'm a pitcher. I'll try that again. One, two. Here it comes. Oh, oh yeah, in. baby. Good pitch. And that'll get him out. That'll be out of the inning as we're in at the end of four and a half. It's Lincoln County 7, Lawrence County 5. You're watching a Southpaw television production. Carter's Drug Store on the east side of the Fayetteville Square has the highest quality pharmacy with the best pharmaceutical staff anywhere. Not only is Carter's a drug store, Carter's has a wide selection of Hallmark cards for every occasion. Just walk in the door at Carter's and you will see many friendly faces that will help you in any way possible. For the looks you love in beauty products to the most lovely monogram sterling silver jewelry, Carter's has it all. For that special gift or decorating your own home, Carter's has the most unique items to choose from. Carter's has a great selection of picture frames and you can find baby gifts to anniversary gifts. When you absolutely don't know what gift to get, just come in and look around for the best gift ideas anywhere. Stay in good health with all the vitamin supplements that Carter's has to choose from. And the next time you need a prescription filled, let their highly trained and professional pharmacist fill your needs. The kind service that we have all come to depend on 365 days a year, Carter's Drug Store, where everybody goes. Back here at Falcon Field, Jeff Neal and Tommy Hawk, and Lee Jean along with you. And this is a presentation of South Paw Productions, authorized under the broadcasting rights granted by Wayne County High School through these cable television networks solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any republication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of South Paw Productions is prohibited. And the production has the approval of the Lincoln County High School. And we're going to send up Thomas Osteen, number five, to the plate here to lead us off. The bottom of the field. Pitcher, we've got a new pitcher for Lawrence County. Brett Walker, number 10, has come into the game. Michael Kennedy is gone for the night. One, two. <laughs> Walker is a solid pitcher for Lawrence County. 7.1 innings pitch, a .95 ERA. And there's something you don't see very often. The new catcher is Michael Kennedy, who was the pitcher. Osteen on the year is a 256 batting average, seven RBIs. Jack Cougar. Jack Cougar. Two ones account, bottom of the fifth, seven five, Lincoln County leads. The new pitcher is Brett Walker. 268. Osteen with his one for two night is now hitting 268 on the season. Raise that batting average just a hair on, on the year. Low pitch, two or three and one. Now he's ahead three and one and now He's got to get something good right here to hit. The pitcher's got to come to him with something, and hopefully, Osteen can get on get on the sacks. Get something going. Walker ready. Here's the pitch. Ball high, and Cooter, I mean Thomas Osteen draws the walk. Will lead us off here in the field. That's going to bring up number 16, Matt Smith. I was uh, saying a minute ago, that's uh, something very unusual that the uh, the guy that pitched the first four innings is now the catcher. So you'd think he was too tired to throw anybody out at second right now, but uh, that's what uh, Lawrence County made to move on, and we'll see how that works out. Matt steps in here with a single, and I believe a fly out in his second time up, so he's one for two on the night. And he readies to take the first pitch. Here it comes, bunt attempt. Lays the ball down, third baseman's coming in. It's gonna be a close play at second. And he's, Osteen's in safe. Bad, so, bad great choice. bunt by Matt Smith. It gets the play down. It was a little hard, but. Bad choice by the third baseman. Should've went to first, got the easy out. But he went to second for the hard out and didn't get that one. So, now it's two runners on, nobody out, instead of having a runner at second with one out. That's the situation in baseball. You gotta know they're speedier runners. Gotta know how fast they can get down. Uh -huh. The sacks and that time should have went to first and didn't do it. And now the Falcons got a great chance to add some more uh, with the uh, with Ashby up there now hitting the second baseman. Joey got on the first inning and then was caught stealing and uh, got on the error from the first baseman and scored in the fourth inning. And now here he is up here in the bottom of the fifth with runners on first and seconds and no out. 
So the new pitcher is already in a little bit of a jam here, and we're hoping to uh, put a run or two on the board. And there's another bunt attempt. Ball way inside. Joey has to duck out of the way, pull the bat back. So coach is trying to move him up here. Well, you do little things right here. You hopefully get the runners moved up in scoring position. And with one out, you'll have uh, – the bottom near the bottom of the order, Holt coming up, and hopefully he's, he has struck out twice tonight. But hopefully Holt can uh, have, have an RBI chance right here. So yes, sir. Hopefully he can uh, cash one in. Had not to me those chances. This is where you get year. your chance to show what you can do. Well, you because you buy them the order, not gonna get many RBI chances. It's two and zero oh. now to Ashby. What's Joey hitting on the season, uh, Lee? Joey's hitting 324 with eight RBIs. So Joey's been a good bat for the Falcons this season so far. And I know he'd like to come through right here. 2 0 count, way inside. <laughs> so Joey darts back for the second time this at bat. <coughs> and he's up looking at a 3 0 count. <laughs> he's going to run over and have a little conversation with Coach Sloan at third base. Trying to get some advice right there about what he can do on this situation right here. Number 10, Brett Walker in the game for Lawrence County. Record of 1-0 on the season. With a .95 ERA. Very good ERA. And the, opponent, the opponents are batting against him 167. I tell you guys, I got a feeling his ERA is fixing to go up. And he has eight strikeouts, eight strikeouts on the year and only three walks so far this season. Yes. There's six. an automatic strike on a 3-0 count. In seven and one third innings, seven and a third innings pitch so far. So Joy's going to be looking for something good right here. Three one to count. Pitcher can't afford to give him up, so he's going to have to give him something over the plate. There it is. Joy bunts it right out good in front bunt. of the plate. It's going to move the runners up, and they get Joy at first, but that moves the runners up. So a good sacrifice by Joy Ashby. And Ashby does his job right there. Get him over, get him in. This game he played right there, and hopefully Holt now can get – he has to play the game of get him over. Holt's got to play the game of get him in right here. we got a pinch hitter coming in. Number – what number? What number? Who is it? Number one. Number one, that's Ryan Tate coming in to pinch hit. 5'7", 165, and a sophomore on this Falcon baseball team. Ryan Tate's batting 240 on the gear. He has two RBIs, three strikeouts. Yeah, two RBIs he got were this past weekend uh, as the Warriors played in a tournament in Murfreesboro. He had a uh, RBI single uh, with his RBIs so far. Hopefully he's got another chance right here to cash two more in. Oh. Bottom of the fifth, one out. Runner Make some second, contact, third. get a fly ball or grounder uh, through the hole. Anything that's a hit will, will score a run, but a uh, long fly ball will sack fly somebody in here, and we could use another insurance run. So let's hope Ryan has a good at bat. He steps in, meaning business. Walker ready's on the mound. Here's the pitch. Ball in the dirt. Gets away, but nobody's advancing. Not far enough back here to do anything. So Brett Walker having a little bit of trouble here. He's in a big time situation trying to hold his team in this game. Trailing 7-5. And one over the count on Ryan Tate. Yeah. On deck for the Falcon on deck for the Falcons, number 15 to DH Joey Miller. And on the night Joey is single and reached on a fielder's choice earlier, so he's one for two. Next pitch to Tate. Little grounder past Walker. He won't throw the throne, he'll throw this and he'll get the man at first, but run will score. So RBI scores Osteen. So Ryan Tate comes in, does his job, scores the run. That'll bring make two outs and bring up the DH number 15, Joey Miller. So, so two down, run in. So Tate's RBI his third of the season. And that was just out of the pitcher's reach, which uh, saved that play because he would have made the. I uh, got the out at home, most likely. Joey Miller with six at bat, three <coughs> hits, batting 500 on the year. He has one RBI, no strikeouts. Joey Ashby on third base takes his lead off. 
Walker readies with the next pitch, and Joey thinks he's taking a little too much time, so he calls time. And we'll set him up and try all over again. Bottom of the fifth, two outs. 0-1 oh, to count. Here comes the pitch. A little curveball high. 1-1. One, one. We invite you folks out uh, to see one of our broadcasts. I don't have it in front of me right now, so I can't tell you when our next one is, but uh, we appreciate you checking with us. It'll be Monday night. There's a pitch, a uh, strike. Let's count one, two. So Joey's got to hang in here. Ashby takes his lead off third. Boy, there's a grounder to second. He's going to come up, throw over, and they get him just barely, and that'll get the third out of the inning. Falcons score one, though, and lead 8-5 here in the bottom of the fifth. We'll be right back for the top of the sixth. This is a Southpaw production. Thank you for calling Cars Plus. Can I help you? Hi, I'm Steve McQuarter, owner of Cars Plus. We're located in Park City, Tennessee on Huntsville Highway. We specialize in trucks, cars, vans, and sport utility vehicles. At Cars Plus, we offer friendly hometown service, no high pressure sales, and have financing available along with a standing warranty program. We service and inspect all our vehicles. My father, Ronnie McWhorter, former owner of Ron 66, heads our service department with over 35 years experience. Here at Cars Plus, we handle everything from your old classics to your new classics, and anything in between. So come by and see us at Top Park City Hill, or give us a call at 433-1922. And we're back here, top of the sixth inning. Boone Yokely is up, or is this a pinch hitter? I believe we have, we've got a pinch hitter. We'll find out who that is for you folks. We're proud to have in the booth with us right now, Jared Parsons, who has committed this week to, is it Martin Methodist, Jared? Yes, sir. For in a golf scholarship. We're proud of Jared. He's uh, been hot on the links for the last three years and has done good for Lincoln County Falcons. And we'd like to congratulate you on signing. You can tell, tell us about it. Tell us what all's going on in your life. And how good a spring you having? It, I'm, I'm having a pretty decent spring. I just played in a tournament and I did pretty well in it. It's a hard hit ball to shortstop. Welly up, over, out one. Good play. So it's just now getting to where you can play golf without the wind blowing 40 mile an hour and well, at 20 it degrees. <laughs> it still does it that. It still huh? does that. Yeah, well, that's all right. <laughs> As summertime rolls on here, it'll be uh, easier to do. Now that's, up to bat is number 30, Eric Johnson. Talk, talk about the whole process here of getting the scholarship with Martin Madness. I mean, anybody in every school is going to look at you in that, in that whole process? Uh, some, some schools sent me a letter that say, that you know they'd like to have me, but they've given out my uh, everything they have. But if I could get up there, they'd like to talk more in depth about walking on, or you know, so on. And Martin, they some small schools like UT and Alabama and East Tennessee State. And then Martin, they uh, they sent me something and. Oh, he's they, waving yeah, the catcher. Some, yeah, 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 it's a big, big school. We talk about just going to going to a smaller place like a they, uh, it's an NAIA school, but still, it's a fairly, I think, a fairly decent, you know, golf, yeah. a golf program, and and you know, and, and that type of yeah. thing. As far as going, you're not going too far away from home either. I know it's no, I know, I know it's something your parents like too. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, Is that? Talk about, uh, about that a little bit. Yeah. Not going too far away from home, you should blast. Yeah, you know, I'll be, I'll be able to uh, commute. Yes, and a lot of the golf courses that. They play on. I know pretty familiar well. with it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. And how, how often do you play? Are you playing well, a lot now? You yes, I play. The warmer weather. I mean, I play, play every day. And then, but well, once uh, once I commit, I'll be able to play the all the courses they get to play, and I'll have all the same privileges that. 
so everybody you, on the team has. Do you feel like you can step in? And, oh, yes. And I feel like. I already told you, you can step in and control. <laughs> yeah, I, bl- I believe I'll be able to. So after Ben yeah, Beckman. Yeah, four seniors, so. The pinch hitter led off sure. the inning with a 6-3 ground out, and Eric Johnson, uh, the ninth uh, hitter in the lineup for the Lawrence County Wildcats, came up, and he's just drawn a walk. That brings up their leadoff hitter, number 12, Chad Shannon, who has home run, homered, and grounded out 6-3 twice on the night. He's one for three with one RBI. So we'll talk some more here to Jared in just a minute. First, second pitch in is a high for a ball. That's a 1-1 count on Chad Shannon. That's going to bring out Coach Sloan just to have a little talk with Jim Cooter on the mound. Did you kind of know how they, how they fared last year? You said they had four seniors and losing, losing quite a bit of those. And have they recruited, have they recruited quite a bit of freshmen for next year that you, besides yourself? Or, uh, you know hey, I talk, last time I talked to him, he told me that he uh, had played with some boys from McMimble that I know, uh, Matt Cotton and Jeremy Ritz. And I played with, I played with Jeremy in the region tournament and I, I played with Matt some in the summer before, you know, and just in years past in golf tournaments. And so we're back to play now. I'm not real sure who oh, they, that, that's all he told me, he asked me about them. Foul, foul, foul back, that make counts one and two. Uh, well, we hope you have a good summer. And are you going into this, uh, Martin in the summer, or will you wait to the fall? I'll wait to the Yeah, I'd fall, enjoy the summer first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and get tuned up real good. No. <laughs> There's a ground ball down the third baseline. It's going to be fair. And Yates makes a great stop, throws over. Base runner overruns second. And Ashby alertly tags him out. So we got an out at second here on a little bit of a, a blunder by the second uh, the base runner for Lawrence County, who overruns second base, Lee. Coach, when, Coach James can't believe it. He signaled for him to stop. The runner thought he was signaling for him to come on around. He went on around, and uh, good play there by the second baseman to tag him out. You say you, say you play every day. Who, who carries for you most of the time when you're out there? I, myself. Yeah, myself. Oh, okay. I, get, <laughs> I get the loop. Self, self candy. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Good exercise for you. So. <laughs> yeah. And that brings up the next batter, Chris Scott, <laughs> and he swings and misses on the first pitch. Strike one. So Scott, no one count to, to Chad Scott. We yeah. want to get through this guy. He scored two runs tonight, uh, even though he's only got one hit. To second. There he laced one into left center. That's going to send a runner around third. He's going to try to score all the way from first base, and he's going to. And Chad, Chris Scott is in to second base with a RBI double. Hit and run that time. The runner was all halfway to second base when the ball made contact. Good, good call that time by Lawrence County's coach. Got the runner around to score. So Lawrence County threatening here, and they score 8-6 now. Top of the sixth. And so Chris Scott has made something happen almost every time he's been up to bat tonight. And this brings up Jay Hartsfield, number two. Hartsfield has an infield single, grounded out uh, to first base, and walked. And he scored two runs on the night. Who is your um, favorite golfer on the tour? Uh, David Duvall, probably. I've... Wow. I saw, I met him, or didn't meet him, but I saw him at the U.S. Open when I worked there, and he seemed real nice. He was out giving autographs, and I ended up getting one from him, and he uh, he seemed like a good guy. Oh, he is a great guy, yeah. and uh, he's an extremely very good, prestigious, good but, but he's had a couple bad years, even though he had a uh, a good year, was it last year or yes, something? Yes, he, he won the British Open. Yeah. Who's, who who would be your pick for the upcoming match? That's not too far away. It's the uh, will be your... He he he, he always plays real well there. He finished second last year, and but the batter up dude, Chris Lane. Mickelson's due to win one, and <laughs> yeah. Tiger always plays well too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Guys, this batter up, Chris Lanning, has singled three straight times tonight. He's three for three with an RBI, and with Lawrence County runners on first and second, he could be a threat to us. We appreciate you coming up, and, and I, I'm enjoying watching the last last year and a half with golf. And good luck at good luck at Martin Methodist. Maybe I'll maybe hopefully we can get some, to do some of your matches or something. Follow you at Martin Methodist. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks we'll a lot. We'll see you, Jerry. One day. All right, <laughs> y'all have to do that. <laughs> So, Thank y'all. Chris landing up here, count 0-2. Little flare, he gets one out, and he slapped it, and it's up. 
So tr it's trouble. One run's going to score. That's eight seven. Got to run around third. He's going to try to score. He'll tie it. And landing with an RBI double scores two runs and evens this one up at eight apiece in the fifth. So Scott's RBI double earlier in the in or it's earlier in the inning, and now Lanning has a two, two RBI, two RBI double to tie the game. Coach Sloan going out to talk to his pitcher now. He has nobody warming up in the bullpen, so he's confident Cooter can go the distance. But he's Cooter against the world right here. With two down in the inning. I think he's going to make a change. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll go to a break right here and come right back. You're watching a Southpaw television production. Had any trouble with your feet lately? Come in and visit the Foot Clinic. Dr. Tim Merrill brings you the expertise and special attention needed for even the most difficult cases. Welcome to Dr. Merrill's office. Bunions, ingrown toenails, corns, heel spurs, and even diabetes foot care. You may be surprised to know that your feet are not supposed to hurt. If you are having a foot problem, you are not alone. 60% of the population seeks help for foot problems every year. And now, Lincoln County offers Dr. Tim Merrill. How are you? I'm Dr. Merrill. Tim brings you an extensive background in foot and ankle care. Dr. Tim Merrill takes great pride in the quality of care and provides a caring environment in his office on the Fayetteville Bypass, 2250 Thornton Taylor Parkway, Suite B. Dr. Tim Merrill utilizes his in-office x-ray facility and many other techniques to treat your foot condition effectively for your quick return to work, school, or play. Call the foot clinic today at 433-9600 and get back on your feet. Back here at Falcon Field, Jeff Neal, Tommy Holcomb, and Lee Jean along with you. And Joey Ashley, the new pitcher for the Falcons. No record on the year, 1.85 ERA. <clears throat> Comes into this game in a tight situation with a score deadlocked. Strike right in there to the batter, Kennedy. And he needs an out bad right here with two down. And a runner at second in landing. Ooh. One and one. Just missed outside. So landing on the night, three for three, a double and two singles. But what a night for landing in the, of the Wildcats so far. Strike, one and two. Off speed pitch right there. So he's ahead looking for strike three and to get out of this inning and looking for the Falcon bats to hopefully come alive here in this bottom half of the sixth. Foul tip, still one and two. He's always uh, done good in every relief role he's come in and he's good at putting the ball over the plate. You won't hardly ever see Joey Ashby walk a batter. Uh, so he just tries to overpower him, and his curveball's really been snapping here lately. And he's going to try it right there. And just Mike, missed. Two and two. Mike he Kennedy just almost missed. Went for it. That was a good purpose pitch there. So the count even. Twos are wild. Eights are wild on that board. Two and two. Two out. Scores eight to eight. Just a sixth inning. Don't know what Joey will do here, but he is prone to maybe try to brush the batter back just a little bit. No, he's going to curveball again. That's foul back out of play. Count stays 2-2. Two, two. He's still got one ball to give, and with Joey, he's not scared to go 3-2 on a batter when he has to, to try to, to work his own purpose out of it. I thought he might try to get him back off the plate a little bit. He looks in and gets ready for the next pitch. Two and two. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Joey Ashby comes in and gets us out of this little jam, even though Lawrence County scores three runs and ties the game 8-8 here in the sixth inning. We'll be right back. That was his 13th K of the year, and we'll be right back. This is a Southpaw production. Ten. Ten. Buying or selling? Let Century 21 AAA Associates assist you through your real estate transaction. We are professional realtors dedicated to integrity, service, and progressive marketing. We offer free market analysis to anyone considering the sale of their home or property. Our listings at Century 21 get far-reaching exposure through two multiple listing services, covering Kentucky, Tennessee, and Alabama. We're putting hundreds of agents to work for you. You can access us on the internet, view our advertisements in Huntsville, Alabama, locally in the Exchange, or the Real Estate Showcase of Lincoln County. We offer building lots and acreage, starter homes to executive manors, farms, prime hunting land, commercial and investment properties. Whatever you're looking for, we can help you find it. Located two blocks south of the Lincoln County High School, Century 21 AAA feels that our customers deserve and will receive the finest service offered by any real estate organization. Back here at Falcon Field, 8-8, top of the sixth inning. 
It's a dead even game and heading leading off for the Falcons this inning is number 24, John Whaley. I'd like to take a moment to talk about the Lincoln County High School track team. On Thursday, April the 11th, they will be at the Tullahoma High School for the District 8 Championships. All District 8 schools will be there Thursday, April the 11th, Tullahoma High School at 2 o'clock. So go out and support the Lincoln County High School track team. Beautiful track in Tullahoma, and it'll be a great, hopefully a great day. Open good weather out there that day for some track. See them run, and they got a good relay team this year. And hopefully they can, you know, they're doing very well with, with, the, with the girls and the boys, and uh, hopefully they can get some more district championships to Lincoln County High School. Swing and a miss for strike one, one and one to Whaley. Whaley on the season currently is hitting 370. He has three homers and nine RBIs. Third on the team in that, that statistical category. Two and one. And comes a pitch from Walker. High, three and one. So Whaley ahead, we gotta get something good to hit right here and Walker knows he has to come to him. Well, I hope he'll be a smart batter right here. We need John on, got great speed. One of the fastest runners in District 8. Strike on the corner, three and two. Full count, so count's full. And Whaley took that one and very Took it. liberal with the, with the plate there with the, was the umpire. Players must adjust when that happens. 3-2 the count, full count. Ball four walks him right there. So he went wasted one, Whaley walks. That was a good beginning, and that's going to bring up the right fielder, Jared Gentry. <laughs> Jared Gentry, a 282 batting average on the year. Gentry with five RBIs and eight strikeouts. And he has scored a run and knocked in a run tonight. Even though he's 0 for 3, he has contributed. So right here would be a good place to get his first hit tonight. Bunt attempt right back to the pitcher. Pitcher's going to go to first, wouldn't get the out, and the sack bunt runs, moves the runner over to second. So Derek, Jerry did his job. Smart decision that time by Walker to go to first to get the for sure out. Earlier in the game, we had a guy try to go to second, get him back to first, get the double play, and ended up Link Kenny was credited with errors. Got all the way around the third, second and third, and ended up scoring two or three runs that inning. So, and I believe that's the second sacrifice tonight. So, Lincoln County doing those little things that uh, Coach Sloan mentioned earlier in the season they, they have to do. And they're going to put on uh, Brandon Sisk here without throwing a pitch to him. I wouldn't. Uh, you, I wouldn't do that in high school baseball. Always hoping to sure see Brandon for the cycle yeah, here. Yeah, but you know, you know, they're not going to pitch to him if he's already got three hits. I wouldn't pitch to him either. Did you, Tommy? I wouldn't put him on first. Thank you. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't fool with it to a guy with four homers and 17 RBIs. I'm going to put him on first and take my chances with I, I Jim Bob Cooter, the cleanup hitter. I ain't got the, I ain't going to say what I'd do if I were a coach, but I always was bad when the other coach did it to sort of squawk <laughs> like a chicken a couple times because I, I don't, I think you're scared to face the batter. And that's going to bring up Jim Cooter here. Hopefully Cooter will make him pay right here in the cleanup spot. He's 0 for 2 on the night, so he's due a good hit. Got runners at first and second. Over, One out. 0 for 2 with a walk. Ball low. First pitch to Jim. So a good RBI chance for uh, Jim Bob right here. Jim Bob batting 319 on the year with 10 RBIs, five strikeouts. There's a ball down the right field line. That's going to go run. all the way to the wall. Well, he's going to score one run. Here comes Gentry around. He'll stop at third. And Cooter with an RBI single. So, so our assist stops at third. I'm sorry, it's not. To, so, Cooter made him pay with a single to right, scoring Whaley. RBI for Mr. Cooter. This is 11th of the season. And puts the Falcons back up on top, 9 8. So, a big hit right there. That's going to bring up Thomas Osteen. And so, uh, as it always has been, the intentional walk hardly ever pays off uh, to a team. I've hardly ever <laughs> seen the intentional walk. And in high school baseball, you don't even have to throw a pitch. And in the major leagues, you have to throw four pitches. The catcher usually stands up, holds his glove out. But in high school, the coach can can decide just to intentionally walk a guy and don't even have to throw him a pitch, and they, they send him to first. Send the guy to first. Yeah, so sure right now, he's at third, 
and possibly going to be our next run scored. If and Osteen can come through right here, Thomas Osteen so will batter. If I'm, five, if I'm that fan and I'm down there and I'm doing that chicken thing I was telling you about a while ago, right now I'm really squawking because that coach, uh, it hardly ever pays off to intentionally walk. Well, you play a lot of things about baseball. There's Osteen a high it. foul. It's going to be a foul pop, and it's foul in the right. Drop. And normally you play percentages in baseball that time. It's just for Lawrence County coach. You know, for Lincoln County fans, it paid off. For Lawrence County fans, it didn't. You got a guy three for three hitting a single or double, triple on a homer, and you go with a guy that's 0 for 2 in a walk and doesn't do much, but he just flares one out to right field. Makes you pay. Oh, makes yeah. You, you know, that's the way it goes. Makes and, you pay. And it's 9 8 now. Falcons are looking for more. One thing about the Lincoln County batters, they got to get them going here. The last time Sisk has been on third base, two innings, he was stranded at third base. So the, bat yep. the batters for Lincoln County have to get it going here and get him home. Get some insurance. And there's a hard there's a hit ball. ball. Way back in the left field. That one's way back. Back against the wall. If Sisk is going to score easily, he can try it home. He can just jog. Oh, oh. And Cooter stops at third, 10 8. Osteen smacks a double to left. Scoring Brandon Sis. Thomas Osteen gets his eighth RBI on the season. He's now at second base. Jim Bob Cooter at third. One out, bottom of the sixth, 10 8. Lincoln County leads. Thomas stroked that one. Looked like for a minute it might be gone, but it didn't have quite the distance. But it's uh, over the center fielder's head. Made him run back to the wall. Good hit by Thomas. That's going to bring up uh, the catcher, number 16, Matt Smith. Matt one for two on the night. He had a sack. He's going to walk. He's so get he's, an he gets walk. a walk too, and brings so. up number ten, Joey Ashby, right here. So two intentional walks, one to Sisk, he scored, and now Smith gets an intentional pass. So the bases are full of Falcons, and it comes number third, number, number six, fifth, Tom Doors. Yeah, Dor John, John Doors. Yeah, John Doors, the pinch runner for Smith, as the catchers can get courtesy runners, and right there's one. And we got them loaded here. Loaded. Leading 10-8, bottom of the sixth. Coach James for Lawrence County intentionally walked him to load it up. One out, of course, a 6-4-3 double play. Bring their infield in on the grass here. They're going to try to get the play at the plate. One of them, close to hitting him. Close to hitting him right there. Just inches from hitting him. But Joey doesn't take one for the team. He says, I'm tough. I'm not going to take it for the team. I'm going to keep Well, we sort of like to have that little uh, in he, force. He, he, force uh, he likes to force it, but he, gonna get, he wants to get a hit and run around a little bit. John has two at bats, one strikeout, one hit There's by a ground ball. It's through, right through the hole. Through it's going to score two. Cooter's going to score. Here comes. Here comes the throw to home. Now it's going to be two runs are going to score. Cooter and Osteen score on that play. 12 8 Falcons. So nice the job. RBI single from Joey Ashby puts two more in. Falcons have come out kicking here in the bottom of the sixth. Big hit by Joey Ashby, the pitcher. Four runs this inning. That's going to bring up the pinch hitter, number 11, Kyle Manderson. Manderson, a 5'7", 150-pound sophomore on the Falcon baseball team. So Manderson, a right-handed batter. So four big runs here in the bottom of the sixth. And we and still I think, got runs uh, at first and third. And Tommy Pop, this is the, only highest, one out. the highest output of the season so far for the Falcons run score. We got 10 against Hazel Green earlier in the year. And uh, tonight, 12 is the maximum output we've seen by the Falcons this season. So bats finally coming around, and they're hitting hitting the uh, the uh, hitting the fool out of the fool out of the baseball right now. And the pitcher has just picked off our pinch runner Doris. at first base. So, so that's the second out of the inning. Doris goes to the dugout. And I was wrong. That wasn't John Doris. I thought it was number six, but it was Alan McAllister. Okay, McAllister. Okay. At 13. And now, and now Sloan lecturing McAllister about base running and, and taking the lead. So he'll, McAllister will get that lecture and go back in the dugout. <laughs> and he'll see how next time not to be on or not to get a too big a lead at first base. As the uh, pitch comes in, 1 0. Two outs, bottom of the six, 12 8. Lincoln County leads at the plate is Kyle Manderson. 13 at bats, no hits, eight strikeouts. Little flare. That's a little blue. That's fruit. easy. And that'll do it. So we leave one runner on base, but we come out with four big runs here in the bottom of the sixth, and we're hoping to knock them out in the seventh and go home. That'll do it for this inning. Falcons lead 12 8. We'll see you in just a moment. Hey, Jimmy, you up for lunch? Man, you work too hard. You're making us all look bad. 
Oh well, later. Introducing the Intruder Volusia from Suzuki. Jimmy, take two weeks off. That's it. I won't take no for an answer. It's all you need to get away. This is the place, the place where I can build my cabin and get away from it all with a little help from my all new Suzuki Quadrunner Iger 400. I didn't spend much and it's got all the features I need so I can build my cabin and get away from it all. Get into the great outdoors, get back to nature. Get back on my Iger, get some ice, get some x-rays, get a contractor. And we're back here at the top of the seventh. That's the second pitch down to uh, the batter, Nathan Willis. And he grounds down the first foul. So we are 0-2. Tommy Hawkham, Lee Jean, Jeff Neal all with you here from the Birdcage Falcon Stadium here on the beautiful Lincoln County High School campus. And if this holds up, uh, Lawrence County be 7-5 overall, 2-2 two two in district play. Lincoln County would improve to 7-8 overall and 1-3 in district play as Willis gets the K. Ashby coming in in relief for the Falcons tonight and playing really well. Yes, sir. Joey stands to be the pitcher of record actually here because uh, Nate Lawrence County came back and tied on Jim Cooter. He went five and two thirds inning, pitched a good game, gave up nine hits, eight runs, seven of them earned, walked five, struck out six, and hit one batter. When it's Walker's pitcher record for Lawrence County, he would drop to one and one with the loss. And Walker is the batter right now, number 10, Brett Walker. He's 0 for 3 on the night. Swing and a miss, strike two, 0 and 2. Joey went, is really fired up here yeah, and that, pitching some good stuff. Pitch was way outside. Walker went fishing for that when he kind of uh, on that one. 0-2 pitch, little ground ball to third. Yates over to first, yes, no problem, two down. Routine out, 5-3 on the put out. It's a routine out. Ashby's one out away from getting his first win on the year. He's really come in here on his game tonight, striking out two, three, uh, he one, struck out two so two far. Two Phase batters. three batter struck out two of them. So John, Joey come in and calm down everything. That's going to bring up number 18, Ben Beckman. And Joey's going to try to finish this thing off right here. Good big, pitch, but just a little bit low, ball one. Big win for the Falcons out here tonight and uh, almost getting a, almost even the record out at 500 on the season. Count goes 1-1. One, one. There's the ball back to the pitcher. That may do it, folks. Joey over to first. That'll do it. Out three. Falcons win 12-8 on this beautiful spring night. Uh, Coach Tracy Sloan, Coach Juan Clara Day, and our player of the game, Brandon Sisk. Coach, uh, Lawrence County came out, scored three runs first inning. Looked like they were here uh, for business, but the Falcons come right back and answer with four in the bottom of the first, and we were off to the races. What's your uh, feelings on the game tonight? Well, we've you know we've worked hard on hitting, and uh, we we've, we've struggled in district games swinging the bat, but uh, tonight we swung it well. Um, Brandon over there, uh, you know, he had a double, triple home run and got walked the last time, and. As far as I'm concerned, I think he's one of the best hitters in Middle Tennessee, if not the whole state. He can fly it out, hit the baseball. And, uh, you know, some other guys got some big hits too, and we played uh, outstanding defense. Um, I don't believe we made an error tonight. Uh, you're wrong on that. I didn't look through the books. But, uh, you know, air free baseball and swung the bats well. And, you know, you do that combination. Jim Bob didn't throw bad. Uh, I, I might have left him in a little long, but. Uh, you know, with two district games coming up, you got to save all the pitching you can. And, you know, I probably could have brought Ashby in a little quicker, but uh, it worked out for worked the best. Uh, Joey came in through well, and we scored four there in the bottom sixth. And big win for us. And you know, if we play like that, we can compete with anybody. Yes, sir. Uh, Joey did come in and shut them down right there, and uh, just uh, stifled what the rally they had going, even though they had tied it at that time. And then we came back right out in the seventh inning, and. Uh, when you think everybody was dead tired, we just bam, bam, bam. So uh, big hits. Yeah, Joey uh, Aspie had a big hit, uh, and uh, Osteen had a big hit. Jim Bob Cooter a big hit after yep. they walked Brandon, and yep. you know just everybody stepped up. We bunted the baseball a lot better tonight. Just did the little things, and you know they played the way. That's the way I want to play baseball tonight, and you know we play like that, we can we'll, you know we'll win a lot more games. 
Yes, sir. Well, we appreciate you coming up. We know you're happy, and we hope we'd uh, fare well the rest of the week. We've got about four or five more games this week, haven't yes. we? And so we hope we uh, keep this momentum going and uh, to get some district wins here and start clicking on all cylinders like I uh, know you want them to. I got uh, Jeff's going to ask uh, Coach Clarity a question now. Coach, seems like a, it's a fifth time this year you scored 10 or more runs. Finally, offense finally breaks out after going a week with that many runs at all and getting shut out twice. Well, it's good to see <clears throat> Three run in here, four run in here. When we've just been seeing donuts, you know, in the last couple of <laughs> district games, but you know, we just stepped it up, like Coach said. You know, Brandon come up, big two homer, and answered, answered their big inning. <coughs> Excuse me, and the kids just just feed off of it. Yeah, and I know you gotta, you gotta be happy that Siskis back after the back problems he's had. You gotta be happy that he's back in the lineup. Just have a short lineup a little bit better. Him having the first week, be able to do a few more things and. And worked out the best of us from top to bottom. Everybody, everybody in the lineup tonight did something. You know, a bunt, a hit, a walk. You know, stolen base. So everybody in our lineup contributed tonight. And that's what it's going to take to win district game. And now Lee Jean's going to ask Brandon a question about the guys game tonight. MVP of the game, Brandon Sisk. Brandon, you were three or four with a triple, a double, two run homer in the first inning. Talk about what you saw from the pitcher and what kind of pitches he was giving you. Well, he was he was throwing pretty flat fastballs. They were. They were coming in there pretty good, but he had a 2-2 count on I me. Mean, I was pretty much looking for a curveball, and that's what he threw me. And I just tried to keep my hands back and hit it, and I did. I mean, I didn't have to swing hard or anything. I just hit it. We sort of disgusted when he walked you. You almost uh, hit for the cycle tonight. You had a double, a triple home run, intentional walk. Uh, you got to be pleased with Jim Bob come up right behind you and, and get a big hit. Was You almost had the hit for the cycle tonight. Talk about yeah. that. I was planning, I was looking forward to getting back up there and giving it a shot, but I knew Jim Bob was a real good hitter and I was I was expecting him to put it in play and that's what he did. He did his job. Well, that's tonight's MVP, Brandon Sisk, three for four, one intentional walk, double, triple, and a two-run homer in the first inning. I'd like to thank our sponsors, White's Motorsports, Carter's Drugstore, Dr. Tim Merrill at Foot Clinic, Century 21 AAA Associates, Radio Shack, Maxine's House of Beauty, Howard Bentley, Tracks and Trails, Carl's Plus, and the Cable Network. And a fine group of sponsors we have, and they make all this possible. So if you don't mind, folks, go by. If you see them and go by their place of business, get something from them. Tell them you saw their commercial on uh, television on uh, South Paul Production. And tell them you appreciate them uh, sponsoring Lincoln County High Baseball. We hope you folks will come out and see a game here at the Birdcage. Uh, still plenty of time left in the season, and it's a lot of fun every time you come out and a lot of good food and fellowship. And we'd like to sign off now and tell you it's been a pleasure bringing this game to you, and we hope to see you at a game in the near future. So from all the gang here, thank you, and good night. Put her right in the right spot.